the Hopkinton Precinct and the Kentucky Precinct. And I would like to um, welcome all of you here. Um, I would also especially like to welcome Neil Cass, Town Administrator, Deb Gallant, Business Administrator, um, the Select Board, if you'll stand up, the Select Board. <laughs> The Superintendent of Schools, Steve Chamberlain. Business Administrator for the Schools, Michelle Clark. Any commissioners of the Hopkinton or uh, Village, or Hopkinton or Kentucky Village <coughs> precincts here? No? Okay. Uh, and members of the budget <coughs> board. Um, we always hope that we'll, we will have good attendance from a large number of voters in Hopkinton at the public hearing. And I can see we don't have a lot, um, but I think it's a few more than we normally get, so thank you. Um, I also, um, when we start the official meeting, I would love, like to ask you, that you limit your talk to three minutes or so. This will give others chance to give us their opinion too. Um, and please don't, uh, you can come up secondly if we have exhausted all the people that would like to see it first. Uh, at the conclusion of tonight's meeting, the board will discuss and vote on the budget to be presented to the two precincts within Hopkinton and the town and school meetings which are held in March. Um, so we have a deliberation when we are done by the budget committee and some times it takes a lot of time to get through it and other times it's very quick. So um, without any further ado, I'd like to call uh, the vice chair of the budget committee, Rich Houston, to the podium. <laughs> Janet asked me to, uh, our board chairman, asked me to speak about the budget committee's preliminary votes taken two weeks ago on January 29th. These votes on the four budgets we oversee <coughs> give us an understanding of where we stand prior to our final vote we will be taking here tonight. For the Hopkinton Village Precinct, the Kentucky Village Precinct, and the town budget, the committees were unanimous in accepting the budgets as presented. The school district budget was also accepted as presented, but not unanimously and only after a long and difficult debate. So too this budget came to us from a school board as a non-unanimous resolution due to the increases involved in the budget. A minority on the budget committee proposed additional cutting to the school budget in the amount of 423000 to reduce the $1.2 million increase asked for by the school board to an increase of just 862,000. That would reduce the budget increase from about an 8.9% increase to a 6% increase. It must be noted that the school board had already cut the administrator's budget by $300,000 before being sent to the budget committee. Two positions were cut in that 300,000 an elementary library assistant and an elementary numeracy assistant. The proponents of this cut of 423000 noted that it was needed to slow the increase in school funding, excuse me, school spending, estimated to be 18% over the next two years, especially with two new large bond payments coming up. The constant and large year-over-year -year property tax increases are making housing costs unaffordable, especially for the elderly and the working class. Strong public comment in public and in private back up these points. 
Folks know that with reevaluation and tax, taxes going up faster than their incomes, they have been hit hard and fear they will be forced out of their homes. On the other side of this discussion, it was said that the $423,000 cut would be equal to four or more teaching positions being eliminated on top of the two positions already cut by the school board. The school system has already been under a budget freeze for the last two years, and little reserve funds are available to buffer any more cuts. With 81% of the school's budget dedicated to salaries and benefits of staff, position, positions not regulated by state minimum standards of education would be the only way to absorb these cuts. Elementary literacy or numeracy support staff, foreign languages, sports, and choice classes at the high school would be the areas of reduction of staff. Should this cut go through. Other classes, such as English, math, and social studies would likely increase. <coughs> in short, teachers would be taken out of classrooms and education would be impacted. After much debate, seven of our budget committee voted in favor and three against to accept the school board budget as written. Please give us your input tonight on this difficult decision. We are listening. We know that people will be hurt if taxes go up any higher, and especially if they go up a lot in the next couple of years. We also know that if we don't raise the budget expenditures, programming may be lost at the schools and people may lose their jobs. There are no easy answers. Help us find the middle ground. Thank you, Rich. Um, I apologize. I don't think I gave the school board a chance to stand up. So would the school board please stand up? Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is presentation of the Hopkinton Village Precinct. Thomas Lipona, poem. I always have trouble. I'm Lipona, sorry. that's great. With Krasaniak, I shouldn't, but I do. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Uh, I have like two slides. Is it worth plugging into into this? Sure. Sure, you a, can. Whatever's is easiest. Is the cable over there? Or? Yeah, the cable's right. The cable's right. Oh, yeah. where is it? Do you need a dongle? Uh, got dongles. Is there a dongle? It's HDMI. I've got a dongle. Dongle. I don't even know what you're talking about. To me, <laughs> to me, it's great. I'm sorry. So I can't help. Quick overview, uh, total amount that we will be raising the taxes for the precinct will be 17791 um, The actual appropriations uh, for the precinct is much higher than that, it's $108,000. Um, the difference there is really the, the water board. Um, the water board is self-funded, so we don't really have to um, raise any taxes for that, but it's just a major driver there. Uh, and then for the actual precinct itself, the major driver is uh, streetlights, about $10,000 of electrical usage and replacement parts for the streetlights. Um, breakdown wise, uh, for the water, I'll start with the water because it's kind of the easier part. It's self funded. Um, there's currently $26,000 in uh, checking accounts that carry over, and then there's $56,000 um, of expected sales. That's going up slightly due to uh, a bond that's being taken out. 
Um, and then for the administration side, kind of a little bit more interesting. Uh, for the actual administrative costs, uh, which include various stipends, insurance, um, or like different insurance portions, uh, software, stuff like that, uh, $5,559. Um, we pay for an insurance. And then uh, there's a legal fund and a building fund that carry over year to year that total about $7,000. And that's really just in case uh, anything comes up that needs to be repaired. Um, and then uh, clock winding, it's kind of the coolest portion. Uh, keep the clock going. <laughs> Uh, and then there's a, there's a balance that, that carries over year to year that really funds the, um, the legal fund and the, the building fund. Uh, and then, I mean, the, the only other big thing is there is a major water update. Um, there was, there's two, currently two $99,000 bonds. Um, one has been taken out, the other one has been authorized. Uh, and that's really for an existing capital improvement of the water system. Um, it's been kind of like a, a major thing that's been going on. It, we know it, it, it's had to happen for a really long time, so we're finally taking it on, um, replacing storage tanks uh, and water pumps. Currently, the plan has been approved by the state. Um, we're just finalizing the budget, uh, or fi fi sorry, finalizing proposals, and then um, hopefully we'll start actual construction soon, so late spring um, 2020. And that's pretty much it. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. And for those of you that might not realize it, that little voice that you hear every once in a while happens to be uh, Tom's daughter. <laughs> and she's, yeah, there she is. <laughs> she was at the senior center today, so that was neat. I got to see her this morning. But she's a, she's a little angel, I'll tell you. Um, now, um, questions um, by members of the audience on Tim, uh, Tom's presentation? Do you have any questions? I'm curious, where are the storage tanks? Um, it's right as you drive down, right as you start from the Cracker Barrel and drive down Briar Hill. Um, right when you kind of go down that first dip, there's a little road that goes off. Right. Do you know where they were doing like the major culvert project? Uh, last, just before that. Um, if you look as you're going down towards the left, there's a, a little dirt road. You can see a gate. And then... Oh, okay. Yeah. And then right past there is uh, the, the well, the pump, and uh, the storage tanks. Okay. Thank you. And the clock winding, is that in the church? That's in the church. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? One other question. Yes. Um, how many homes are served in Washington by the water? By the water? Um, I don't have an exact count, but I believe it's in like the 100 and 120 range. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, next is presentation for the Kentucky Village Precinct Budget by Don Houston. Hello, welcome all. The Kentucky Precinct was established in 1895 and has three functions. Provide fire protection for the precinct, and that's done through 84 hydrants. Provide water to 600 customers, and provide 124 streetlights to help us find our way. The water system comprises a 600 gallon storage tank and filtration up on Bound Tree Road, and another 300,000 gallon tank on Main Street here in Kentucky, and it has a distribution of piping of 15 miles. I'm happy to announce the uh, hiring of Sam Curry, our new superintendent of water and sewer. The, uh, the town and the precinct got together to hire one person with both qualifications and uh, met him for the first time last night. And he seems like a very astute person. He was brought up and uh, did the same system over in Rochester. So he's now fully on board. The precinct's major project uh, this year will be replacing the drainage line from the Main Street tank that was supposed to be done last year, but everybody is so busy we couldn't find a contractor, so it's to be done this year for around $91,000. The precinct again wants to raise another $250,000 to put into our capital reserve account, uh, and that's to, in the future, at some point, we're going to have to replace the, the facility up on Bound Tree. The guesstimate of that cost is somewhere around $3 million. We don't know when it's going to happen. It could be five, six, seven, could be out 10 years. 
We're trying to accumulate some money to push in that shop. Right now, we've got 835000 in that account, and we try to add 250000 each year. The operating budget of 263000 is up $30,000 this year. It's a 13% increase, and it's primarily due to hiring our new superintendent. The amount to be raised by taxes is up the same amount, and the total amount to be raised is $304,810. Both of them are going up, uh, but the tax rate is actually going down because of the reevaluation. The tax rate is going down 30 cents a thousand, down to $1.81 a thousand. We invite you to our annual meeting. We usually get about <laughs> one attendance there at that one. It's at the uh, Slusser Center on March 25th at 6 p.m. Any questions? Thank you very much. <coughs> <clears throat> Thank you. Next is presentation <clears throat> of the town operating budget by Ken Trom. Okay. Uh, Ready to go. Thank you. you. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm awaiting uh, going in for hip replacement surgery, so it's painful for me to stand, so I'm going to be sitting to give the presentation. Uh, let me know if you can't hear me. Okay, um, I'd like to start by uh, thanking you all for coming this evening to learn about and discuss how all of our tax dollars may be spent. I'd also like to thank uh, my fellow select board members, all of whom are here tonight. Um, support, they're here to support me where I can't answer any questions. Uh, budget committee members here, the, the Capital Improvement Committee members, and many other committee members for their hard work and dedication throughout this difficult budget process. Without the invaluable assistance of volunteers such as these, as well as many others, our town wouldn't be the terrific place it is to live in. Um, this also goes for our town employees, department heads, town administrators. Now, I view the budget as just a real team uh, project, and uh, <clears throat> we'll see where it goes. Okay. Uh, and so the budget process uh, to date, it actually started this past summer when the select board, in line with the budget committee's guidance, set a goal for an increase of uh, less than 4% while continuing to meet the town's needs while planning for the future. With this information, our department heads prepared their budget requests based on what they need to effectively run their respective departments they met with the town administrator and finance director to review such, held a budget summit to review all the requests and the overall impact. The department heads also presented and discussed their capital requests with the uh, uh, CIP program committee, the capital, that's the Capital Improvement Program Committee. Uh, the select board met with each department head to review their requests which resulted in extensive discussions about needs and ways to reduce uh, those requests. The select board also reviewed and discussed with the CIP committee their recommendations, uh, which you will hear a lot about later and is uh, where the principal uh, topic related to culverts and roads. Okay. With great difficulty, the select board cut the department head's requests by $102,200 and the CIP's recommendation by $265,000. Uh, the select board was also able to use $350,000 from the undesignated fund balance to offset taxes. This was $215,000 more than was available for use last year. <clears throat> While taking these actions, the select board constantly kept in mind the dual concerns of affordability and needs. This budget was then presented to the Budget Committee, who, as Rich uh, just mentioned, unanimously agreed that it should be presented this evening to you without any changes. Uh, this doesn't mean the Budget Committee won't take other actions later this evening. Uh, okay. Uh, it seems like for the seven years now that I've been presenting the town budget, each year turns out to be more challenging, and this year certainly was. I think it's fair to say that no one, including myself, is happy with the results, but we believe it best meets the uh, opposing goals of affordability and meeting the town's needs. 
So at the 10,000 foot level, the final results are operating expenses up 421,000 over the 219 budget, the capital reserve fund trust fund funding up 343,500. There's no change in individual warrant articles and a $215,000 reduction due to the use of the fund balance. So the bottom line is a uh, 50 cent increase in the town portion of the tax rate, or 7.87%. So now turning to the numbers in some more detail. Uh, as far as revenues, other than property taxes are concerned, we're estimating an increase over the 2019 budget levels of 123,673 or 3.8 percent. The major drivers there are, there's several of them. The, uh, the first one is a $32,000 reduction in the land use change tax, and that's due to the select board's decision uh, where instead of sharing the revenues from the, the land use change tax with the Conservation Commission, we uh, at a 35 percent going to the Commission and 100 percent of the 100 percent, we've decided to allocate the whole 100 percent to the Conservation Commission. And uh, that recommendation will be voted on separately at town meeting in March. Uh, among uh, the reasons for doing this is it will provide the Commission with the ability to uh, acquire more matching funds for land preservation because they have, will have more funds available to them. And the uh, dollars going into the land use change tax change dramatically from year to year, so it's really hard to, uh, to budget uh, what a reasonable average figure is. Okay, next is based on uh, 2019 revenue levels, we expect motor vehicle registrations to bring in $80,000 more than budgeted for 2019. So I'd ask there that uh, everyone please continue purchasing new vehicles. Uh, uh, based on the, uh, the current uh, two-year state budget, uh, we expect to receive $49,891 more than budgeted in 2019. In effect, the town, through the two-year state budget, uh, was receiving basically $50,000 in uh, this year and uh, last year. <clears throat> the, the next item, and... Uh, uh, Don Houston just mentioned it, uh, relates to the, uh, the sewer fund and the sharing of uh, an employee between the, uh, the precinct and the town. Uh, and from the town side, uh, on the revenue side, the income from the sewer fund uh, increase actually has no impact on the total to be raised by taxes, as the $60,603 amount is mostly attributed to the precinct and their share of costs for sharing an employee position with the town. Uh, that employee will be responsible not only for running the precincts, uh, water operations, as Don mentioned, but also the town's sewer operations. And in both cases, it'll result in uh, the town and the precinct uh, uh, having to contract out significantly less work, and we believe having a shared employee will provide better service and cost less. The, the last two items on this slide, the transfer station commercial and recycling revenue, are down a combined 30,000, and that's based on 2019 actuals and continue to be an area of the select board and uh, uh, our, our committees uh, continue to look at and keeping a close eye on. Okay. Recognizing that uh, a part of alleviating the tax burden on property owners is to bring in other revenue sources. Just two of the actions that I want to point uh, out are, in this budget, there are funds for a, a part-time or a per diem economic development director. The cost of this uh, position will be split between the town and the uh, uh, tax increment financing districts, and the purpose will be to encourage development and obtain grants for such. We, we hope over time this will result in uh, uh, more uh, tax revenues coming to the town. The, the, the second item uh, is the uh, solar array at the transfer station that was uh, approved at the uh, last town meeting and gave the select board authority to proceed with, with this. 
And uh, what's happened so far is the, uh, the company has exercised their option with Hopkinton and Webster, and we've received a, a check for $2,500. Now the company is moving forward in terms of working out agreements with Eversource and Unitil, uh, independent uh, system operator for New England, and other items like this, and we stand ready to help in that process, and we'll be having uh, more public information on that as uh, things develop. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> on the operating expense side of things, we're proposing an increase of $421,350, or 5.79%. Again, among the major drivers are the addition of a part-time uh, 25 hour per week position for the town clerk tax collector's office, a merit wage pool based on a 3% average increase for our, uh, what I would call our excellent town employees, wish we could afford to give them more. Uh, <clears throat> we will be continuing our current health insurance offerings, which are facing a guaranteed maximum annual increase of 6.4%. It may be later, uh, lower but we don't know that until, I believe, after town meeting. And the other reason is there's just the change in the status of some employees, say, from single coverage to family. Uh, <clears throat> another item was the uh, uh, full-time wages for our police department are increased due to a uh, comparative salary analysis uh, with uh, other towns. And just as an aside, uh, uh, I wonder how many people know that recently Concord was rated the seventh safest community in the state and the safest in terms of violent crime. And I, I think that is something we have to thank Chief Pecora and his department for. Okay. Uh, next is uh, full-time wages for our Department of Public Works. They're increasing due to uh, uh, we uh, added a, a position during the past year and so this year we're having a full uh, year's worth of salary for that position. And, and finally, uh, there's the, uh, again, the uh, offset, uh, the revenues rating relating to the uh, sewer expenses from the sharing of the uh, position. Okay, okay uh, turning to the uh, warrant articles for the capital reserve funds and trusts, they total $890,500 or a $343,500 increase. And there the major drivers are uh, one uh, $127,500 toward the purchase of an estimated $625,000, have to say that again, $625,000 fire engine this year. And that's replacing an engine that was from 1995. Uh, <clears throat> well, what I'll get into more detail lately is we have a major backlog of road and culvert work. And one of the uh, warrant article items here are uh, funds uh, for $100,000 to uh, be part of uh, uh, how we attack that issue. There'd be an increase of $50,000 toward the replacement of our 2015 ambulance in 2023. And that would be at an estimated cost of then of 333,000. We're including $61,000 for the library, and that's mainly for painting inside and out, as well as continued upgrades to the sprinkler system, which we can all understand why we are upgrades to the sprinkler system. <clears throat> um, there's also $30,000 for sewer equipment and sludge removal. In the next several years, sludge will have to be removed from the uh, lagoon at a cost of uh, over $200,000, and we're just building up the reserve for that. And, and finally, there's a reduction of $20,000 to town facilities maintenance trust with the major expenditure this year for the driveway and parking area at the police station. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> under individual warrant articles, we are asking for authority to go out for a $2.2 million proposed road bond. This is expected to be a 10-year bond with an estimated cost of approximately $250,000 per year. And, but our first payment will not be due until 2021. 
So that's not in the tax rate we're proposing here. Uh, <clears throat> while the, uh, the expenditures uh, for these funds, would the $2.2 million would be mostly used to address culverts on Kearsarge, Briar Hill, Boundary, and Tyler Bridge, which our uh, Department of Public Works feels must be dealt with soon. Um, there are a lot of other road projects that should also be dealt with soon. And again, per our Department of Public Works, results in a total of $7,863,838. <clears throat> While the Select Board would like to address all of these issues quickly, uh, from the viewpoint of our pocketbooks, we've opted to ask for a $2.2 million bond now, as well as the additional 100000 I mentioned. And we're also, uh, as we have been for a number of years, increasing the line item for shimming and paving uh, within the operating budget by 5%. That brings another 17700 into play. Um, <clears throat> one good thing about seeking a bond now is the timing that we expect interest rates to be no higher than two and a quarter percent and potentially uh, even fairly significantly lower that than that uh, and if it come if we can through the uh, the state finance authority uh, come in at a rate at two and a quarter or lower I'll anticipate that the town would go ahead and refinance all of its existing debt, thus saving some additional funds. Okay. Um, the other major uh, impact on the tax rate is how much of the undesignated fund balance we can apply to offset taxes this year. We, we're proposing to use 350000 which is an increase of 250000 over the amount used last year. The major reasons for the increased amount are the additional revenues above the budget coming from motor vehicle registration. Again, thank you all for buying new cars. And uh, that our department heads are, do a great job of uh, uh, keeping their expenditures at or below budget. So this next slide just puts all the numbers I've been discussing together. And the, uh, the, the bottom line is that we're seeking a 50 cent increase in the tax rate or 7.87 percent and uh, that's on the town portion of the tax rate based on the new assessed valuation and while i don't have a slide for it i just want to mention again in response to a, a comment uh, rich houston had raised about the concern particularly for our uh, our low-income seniors is that it's beyond the jurisdiction of this budget committee but the select board at town meeting will be asking for uh, approval to increase the exemptions for low-income seniors and disabled. So with that, are there any questions? Bonnie? I Christie Smithfield Road. I just have a question. I see that you're increasing funding for roads and culverts. And several years ago, the Conservation Commission did a very thorough um, study of the culverts and town roads and which ones needed to be upgraded and paid special attention to if they were replaced or repaired to ensure fish and wildlife passage. And I wondered if that study is being used because it looks like now. We're going to fund a lot of the culvert repair and replacement, so this would be a good time to do that. The answer is yes. Good. And thank you for doing that. Glad, glad to hear it. Okay, thanks. Okay, well. Any other questions? Please give your name. I'm Rita Blanchard. I live on Barton Corner Road. Um, just. I didn't see any fire department wages in there. Wages? 
Yes, you said oh, that you had the salaries for the police department. You did not yeah, have there, any. There were, yes, I mean, I was talking about significant changes. Okay. Yes, there were certainly fire okay. department wages, um, but not significant changes. Thank you. Do we really think it's prudent to be buying a new fire truck and ambulance? Um, and with everything else? My understanding on? is absolutely. Uh, I, I, I feel that I know our, <clears throat> our fire department, police department, whatever, uh, okay. you know, if, if they say they need it, they need it. Right. And like I think I mentioned, the, the age of the fire, the fire engine that's being replaced. Because okay. I know we have the fire engines we're not using out on back way to Concord. You know, that's like an on-call station that we don't use all that often. I believe those are, you know, older, smaller machines, engines. All right. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Okay, next is presentation of the school operating budget, the ATA and Keepsters contracts by William Chapin, Jr. <laughs> Mark. Did you get a round of applause today? No, I didn't get a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> it's been building. Just <laughs> Sorry. Did, Wait, you, did you bring your own cheering team <laughs> with you? <laughs> I know I'm just kidding. Um, uh, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Um, I want to thank the, um, the budget committee. Uh, Janet, thank you so much for all your time and service you've given this town. Um, I want to thank the school board. Uh, we've had a great uh, school board crew this year. It is not easy work uh, to make meetings. Um, Jim O'Brien, Matt Blanger, um, Norm Goopel um, actually makes most of the, he's making most of the uh, budget committee meetings and a lot of the select board meetings as well. He's really given a lot of time into this. And then finally, uh, Liz Durant, who is finishing out um, a 12-year term. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, just, just a lot of dedication to this district, and uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't go unnoticed, Liz. Thank you for all your service uh, that you've given us. I also want to thank um, uh, Steve Chamberlain, Obviously, our uh, leader through here, uh, Michelle Clark, uh, when you work on the budget committee and you're not as great uh, with the fine, fine print, uh, it's always nice to have Michelle in your corner. Um, she's very rarely stumped uh, whether we all understand uh, the terminology that goes on. She, she certainly does, and I think um, the budget committee, uh, I don't want to, well, I will speak for the budget committee. I think they're very appreciative of uh, Michelle's uh, fine work there because it is not easy um, to do the numbers for a school district uh, in, this, in this environment. So thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Steve. Um, and, um, and I'd like to thank Rich uh, for his comments. Um, Earlier, I don't know if Janet prepared those for him or, or just, but uh, I thought he spoke very well. Um, I'm sorry, Rich. I didn't mean to, okay. They know you collaborated, but uh, they, 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 they were well done. I mean, it is a struggle, and I, and I, don't, I don't want anyone to think that, um, you know, over the past, uh, ever since I've been part of the school board, um, the budgets have, the budget and, the, and, and what we spend has, has been paramount in, in what we think about. We are, we are trying to run you know, the best district we can um, with the amount of costs that, uh, you know, that, that we can limit. So um, it, it, has been, it has been a struggle for everybody and, uh, and we all are on the same team. I mean, I think we all want what's absolutely best for this district and we just have different opinions sometimes as to as to how to get there but uh but i, I you know thank you rich for those comments uh earlier um so just getting in a little bit on the presentation here um i want to talk a little bit about the process uh, that we went through uh december 5th um the presentation superintendent made a presentation of the operating budget um this was the first chance um we had, a, we had an idea of what, what we were looking at uh, coming into this year. And, uh, you know, as um, 
As, uh, uh, you know, as um, Ken had said, uh, this is a particularly difficult year. I mean, I, I, since I've been on the school board, um, it, has, it hasn't been easy uh, with the numbers that, uh, that we've had to deal with. Um, on December 12th, um, we looked at the uh, capital improvement plan, revenues, and, and the trust values. Um, went back on December 19th. And um, we tasked the superintendent with giving us an idea of what, you know, teacher reductions would look like. Uh, actually, when rubber hit the road, what they would look like at each school and, and including special education. And, uh, and, and each department head came in and, uh, and talked about what, you know, what, what they would need to do um, to make, um, you know, a teacher reduction in their, in their particular area or in their building. And it gave the school board a real sense of, of what we were dealing with. Um, January, we school board still went back to the superintendent and asked him to uh, to tear out um, what it would look like with a tax rate um, increase of seven percent, then six, then five, then four, to really get a sense of, of what we're dealing with in terms of you know I guess it's it's wants and needs, but it, but if we are going to make cuts, they have to come from somewhere, and the superintendent's going to determine that. And we look to him to see what those would be. Um, and then on January second, uh, school board gathered together um, to come to try to come up with a budget um, from you know deriving from the superintendent's budget that we we would present to the budget committee. And uh, after long deliberation on that particular night, um, the school board decided to cut out uh, $300,000 out of the, the superintendent's budget. Um, that was a three to two vote, I believe. Um, I think there was one um, a, a school board member who felt that there was too much um, in cuts and, and one that felt there wasn't quite enough. But nonetheless, uh, we, came up with a, uh, we came up with a number and a majority vote that we came to, this, to the uh, budget committee to present a budget um, that had uh, a $300,000 reduction from what Steve's budget was. Steve then went to work in deciding what that would look like, and, uh, and that's sort of how we got started with the budget committee. Um, now on the bottom, if anyone can see that, on January 8th, uh, we presented, uh, school board presented uh, uh, the, the operating budget uh, and, and the warrant. Um, e these are not easy, easy uh, meetings, okay? So we then, um, the, the budget committee was tasked with looking at a, a much deeper look of the fiscal uh, 21 budget. Uh, we had question and answers, and then we went over the, uh, the HEA contract, which is the teacher contract, which I'll get to in a little bit. Um, and on January 22nd, as we, on the 15th, we did not have an agreement yet on the Teamster contract, which is the custodians of the school. Um, we did have one on January 22nd, which we needed to review with the budget committee. Um, and then today is the public hearing on all budgets. And then our annual meeting is on the 14th. So it just gives a little timeline. Um, next slide uh, shows a little bit of the fiscal uh, 2021 budget drivers. So uh, we talked a little bit about, um, I think Rich had mentioned, um, you know, 80, 82% or 80, 82% of our total cost of operations come from personnel. So obviously uh, one of the biggest drivers is health, health insurance. Um, the other big driver was the uh, facility project bond that was approved uh, last uh, school board uh, meeting, last March 12th, it's there around. And then we had, uh, we had an increase in a uh, specialized transportation uh, situation as well. Um, just getting into health insurance. Uh, increase, uh, the major increase is a result of the guaranteed maximum rate. I think uh, Ken had mentioned this a little bit uh, earlier uh, with the town employees. Um, that is a, uh, that's determined, that's a number that's determined by the health trust board um, and given to us in October, November of what that number might be, but we don't know what it actually will be until maybe mid-March, early April, but a, a, a maximum rate of an increase of 6.4% is kind of a worst case scenario um, in, terms of, in terms of where we're at there. 
Uh, so that total increase on the health insurance side is 351000 or uh, 45 cents per thousand on your tax rate. Uh, we also talked a little bit about a uh, facility project um, that was approved um, last year. Um, we have budgeted for a 20-year level uh, principal bond uh, with a current interest rate of 3.75%. Um, again, worst case scenario, the good news on that, I, I, don't, uh, I'm not, I don't know if we go as low as two, two and a quarter. That, that number could be significantly lower. We hope it, we hope it will be. Um, but in this particular budget, we're budgeting off the number that uh, we proposed for last year. I think that was a 3.75% was the best estimate we could get last year, which I guess in some circles is scary. It could have gone the other way. But, uh, but anyways, that's the budget number. And the good news is, is that that number probably will be lower. So um, in this fiscal year 2021 that we're talking about here, it's a $219,000 increase because we won't get the full year's worth of interest on that bond. Um, but that will come full in 2022, which will be uh, an $849,000 budget item or a 1.09 estimate based on that 3.75% interest rate on the 20-year level principal bond um, for the facility project. And then in transportation, we had a uh, we, we just we had need for um, transportation issue of, of eighty two thousand um, that that um, we are you know anticipating for next year. That is a, a, a bit of a driver here. That's eleven eleven cents per thousand. Um, now, just taking a quick look at what the March fourteenth uh, warrant is going to look like. Obviously, you got Article One. Um, Article Two is um, the SB Bill um, Two that will be discussed at that point. And um, for those not uh, aware of that, um, I guess more on that to follow. I think. Yeah, we got another slide. I guess coming on that one. Um, but anyways, um, uh, Article Three will be the uh, the budget. We'll go over the budget. Um, Article 4, 5, potentially 5, will be the uh, Hopkins Educational Association. Um, this will be their contract. We'll go into detail on that, improve that, or um, discuss that. Uh, Article 6 um, will be the Teamsters contract. Article uh, 8 is the contingency fund. There is more on this coming. But I'm just going through the article here is how it will be presented. Um, Article 9, the maintenance fund. Article 10, special education trust. Article 11, vehicle trust. And then Article 10, uh, or Article 12, which is to transact any other business. Okay. Um, okay, Article 1, reports of agents. And Article 2, we will be uh, discussing Senate Bill SB2. Um, and we will have a public hearing on this on February 20th, Thursday, February 20th. That's the place to come. That's the time to come for that. And we want to really discuss that into a little bit more detail. Um, I you know, need clarification on the specifics on this as well. Um, but my understanding is there's been enough votes to bring this to the ballot. Um, so that we will discuss it. If anyone was here seven or eight years ago, this also came up on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, Warren article um, seven or eight years ago. Um, okay, and then uh, Article uh, three, which is the uh, the bulk here. This is the operating budget, um, which we're showing an increase of eight hundred sixty-three thousand two hundred eighty-six dollars, or an increase of four point two percent. Um, uh, making the total operating budget um, to run the school for 2021 season, 21,416,331. Um, the tax impact on that is 75 cents per thousand. Uh, article four. Whip. Okay, and then just quickly on that operating budget, um, Going into um, the revenue side, um, we did have an increase this year on the state adequacy side of $641,000. Um, that number is not 
in the budget for fiscal year 2021. So for, for, for last year, we had an adequacy aid of one time um, influx that is not, we are not anticipating that coming next year. Um, I think student activity is one increase that we're having. This is just fees for athletics. Um, and then uh, we will be transferring uh, some funds from the Building Repair and Maintenance Fund of $1,912. Um, now decreases, we have a bond in there, $9.7 million, which is revenue from last year. Um, a fund balance of $370,000, which we are resetting the fund balance to $150,000. So that's a decrease in revenue coming to the operating budget. Um, in Article 10, uh, we have $175,000 that we are not projecting to take. We're going to leave it right where it is. Um, and then uh, special education aid, we're seeing a, a decrease of $172,000 from the state. Um, and then a decrease in the state property tax of $38,000. Um, and then a Medicaid uh, decrease of $2,000. Okay, but that is really low. That's worst case scenario on the Medicaid piece, and we'll know more about what the state will give us in Medicaid um, with regards to our employees um, in September, October. So it's tough to budget for that. Now we can't budget. We have to budget what the worst case scenario would be. Um, next article is uh, the Teamsters. Okay, this is, uh, sorry. This is Article 4 HEA, and, and just scratch out Teamsters on that. Um, this is just the uh, teacher contract, okay? So this is another article that, that's going to be voted on. Um, just to summarize this, um, this is a three-year contract. Um, it's an increase of 2.75%. Uh, increase of 2 um, It does include um, Something new, uh, there's a cost share on the health insurance premium of three year, 3% three in the first year, 5% in the second year, and 7% in the third year. Okay, um, cost, the actual cost of the warrant in year one is 307,000, uh, in year two is 315,000, and year three is 309,000, which is a total of 932,000, which is a tax impact of 40 cents per thousand. Here's the Teamster one. Um, these are custodians that we have, um, full-time maintenance staff. Um, it's 160,000 square feet to cover. This is a five-year contract that was negotiated with the Teamsters. Um, it's an increase of 2.5% and then 3.5% the first two years, and then 3%, 4% in years three through five. I have that right, Michelle? Okay. Um, again, some caveats there. Uh, there is a, a health insurance cost share um, beginning year three, a 2% increase, 4%, and then 6% for the employee. And then there's a 70-30 split on a buyout. And this is basically if they have other insurance options, we will pay them to take those other options. Um, and the cost of this warrant uh, in year one is $12,000. $436.58. Uh, year two is $10,750.74. Year three, $13,896.06. Year four is $9,175.10. And year five is $12,192.29. Okay. okay, Article 8 is the contingency fund. Okay, so, so well, we're asking to raise $150,000 in Article 8 for the contingency fund. And the contingency fund is funds used to try to offset anything that we think might be out there that, that might not come to fruition, but might. Um, obviously, it's hard to budget for a year. We don't know how many students we're going to have until, you know, actual... Uh, September uh, date comes. Um, so some of the things out there that we are, you know, thinking we may need um, funds for. Um, it has been projected that our kindergarten enrollment is 86 students. Now, uh, we've talked to our principal, obviously Steve, superintendent, Bill, uh, the principal. We don't, we don't think that's going to happen, but it's been projected 
by the what, who projects this for us? The New England School Development. New England School Development projected this number for us. Um, so subsequently, we put it in there. If if, if we if we get 86 kids, we're we would have to run five sections of kindergarten where we currently have four. So that is something that is out there that, that you know, scares us a little bit. Uh, third grade, so this is the projected up third grade. Current second grade, the second grade class is about 70 kids, 69, 70 kids. It is broken up into four sections. As you, as you enter into another grade level, our thought is maturity um, improves to some degree. Um, I guess that's up for big, uh, for anyone who has a second going into third grade, but we can handle, from a state level, we can handle three sections of 70 just barely. Um, but if we get more numbers in that third grade, in that second grade going to third grade class, again, it is a problem. We would have to go back to four sections of that third grade, and, and the following year would be four sections. Anyway, and then in sixth grade, you know, currently right now with a $300,000 cut that was made by the uh, school board, um, the sixth grade would really roll down into three sections as opposed to four right now. Now we're right on the cusp. Again, if numbers change, we'd have to go back to four. But that really is an instructional shift from what we've done before. The sixth grade is more of a model so a little bit more choice in sixth grade. You're, you're entering into middle school, so it's a, it's, a, it's a tough shift, but it is a shift nonetheless, and we have, we're, we're asking to raise some contingency funds to help um, maybe not make that shift if we have more kids, but the current fifth grade class is lower in numbers. Um, I don't know what the, the actual, what's the actual number of that fifth grade class offhand? About 68, okay? Um, and again, the fourth grade class is a, is a much larger class. So that would go back, you know, how it was, um, you know, in, in future years, okay? Um, let's see here. Um, contingency, okay, again, on the elementary program, this contingency fund could help potentially uh, assist in the library media assistant, um, a numeracy uh, specialist assistant in, in, in the event, you know, we, we, we have more need for that, but currently that is not in our budget, so that would be part of a contingency fund. Um, and then, um, you know, perhaps bringing back uh, FACS, which is Family and Consumer Science, the tax impact of this contingency fund is 19 cents per thousand, okay? I just want people to understand the contingency and also understand that if these funds are not used, they go back. They, they do not just get merged in the operating. And we, we separated these out so that it's an understanding that these would go back to, um, back to the tap, back to the tap. Um, right, next one. <coughs> Okay, Article 9, um, looking to raise money uh, for the Repair and Maintenance Fund. Um, current level of that fund is $192,000. Um, in this budget, we're looking to raise $142,500 um, with potential planned um, spending of uh, $259,000, which would leave us with $72,500. Now, it's not a foregone conclusion that we would do the air conditioning, but that is something that we would raise for that particular fund um, in the chance that we need to replace the air conditioning in the gym. Okay, um, that tax impact is 18 cents per thousand. <clears throat> and then finally, Article 10, uh, Special Education Trust. Uh, this utilization, okay, yes. Okay, um, so this past year, uh, fiscal year 2019, we actually dipped into that particular fund for the first first time in a while. Yeah, second time yeah. in ten years. Second, t second time in ten years. Okay, uh, used forty thousand dollars out of that uh, current funding level is one hundred twenty nine thousand, um, and and we really want to replace we want to replace that uh, the, the 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 number that we use. So the recommended level um, to be funded goes back up to one hundred sixty nine thousand. And um, so we'd raise $40,000 there. The tax impact would be $0.05 cents per.
per thousand. Okay. And then finally, vehicle uh, uh, replacement trust. Uh, current level is forty-five thousand. Um, uh, we just this is something that we add to vehicle replacement trust. We add every year. Um, we need to replace a bus in, in fiscal year 2021, 50,000. Replace a van a year after that, 2022. Um, and then, we, so we're looking to make a contribution of $15,000 into that vehicle replacement trust, which has a tax impact of two cents per thousand. Um, and then finally, you know, I, and this, this number has, you know, this, this average cost per pupil has uh, dropped off a little bit since, you know, in the last six or seven years. Um, could be because the student numbers have been going up. Um, but this is a great uh, slide that shows exactly how much we spend in Hopkinton versus very comparable uh, districts in New Hampshire. When I mean comparable, I'm talking apples to apples. Um, districts that offer a K through 12 so we're really comparing what they're spending and what we are spending uh, in this district. And we're really out of, is it 39? I think it's more than that. 52. It's 52. Out of 52, uh, we rank 26th in spending. So we're really right in the middle. And um, there isn't one school in here that outperforms us in the U.S. You know, U.S. Today, uh, World News, you know, standings. There, there isn't one school in here that outperforms us. So it really is an, a, an above average performance uh, for an average cost. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Before we open it to the public for. Um, Questions, I would like to ask Ginny Houston to read Haynes. of Haynes, I'm sorry. <laughs> How long you've been Haynes? A long time. Forty something years. <laughs> but see these people will know that I knew you as Houston. <laughs> sorry. Janie Hugh Ginny Houston Haynes. Haynes. Um a, a letter that I received this afternoon. Go ahead, Ginny. Okay. Thank you. I'll read from here, and um, I think I have a lot of my voice. How do you say her name? <coughs> Mary Kasturin, and I'm just the messenger. Unfortunately, I have to take Nick somewhere tonight. Will not be able to attend the hearing tonight. I would, I would, however, like to submit the statement to the budget committee. Each year, I try to think of new ways to convince people that our town's ecosystem is not healthy. It is not healthy for so much to go to the school system while people tighten their belts and the town does what it can to keep things affordable. It's not healthy for people to deal with a chronic stress of whether or not they can afford to stay in their house another year. I'm actually scared to do major repairs and updates to our own house because I know it will likely cause the value of our house to go up. Think about that for a moment. Do I repair my deck and risk my, risk my taxes increasing even more, or do I just make the deck off limits and breathe easy because we'll be able to stay in our house for an additional number of years? I'll be honest, the less stressful option is to let the house become decrepit. At the request of the Budget Committee a few years ago, the school began providing tiered lists of reductions should their budget demands not be met. The request was initially made so the budget committee could make more informed decisions about whether or not to support the increase in the school budget. Unfortunately, it has become a bludgeon that the school administration uses to abdicate responsibility when it comes to tough monetary decisions. The tiered reduction list now provides an open path for the school administrations to say the town knowingly took cookies and milk away from the children. We told them we would have to take cookies and milk away, and that's what the town did. Isn't the town terrible for not supporting the children? The school is now more than ever able to hold us hostage. They do it by holding an invisible knife to a child's well-being and threatening to make the children suffer if we as a town don't give the school everything they demand. Here's the thing we forget. The items in the proposed increase never existed in the first place. We're not taking away anything from the children by rejecting the proposed budget increases. If the school says we are taking anything away from the children, it means they did not manage their budget responsibly the past year. 
It means they made poor budget decisions. It, it means they perform the same budgetary gymnastics they always do. Well, we lost the one-time aid from the state, and instead of planning with the knowledge that we wouldn't have that money this year, we spent it on something with a recurring cost, and now the children will suffer if you don't give us money. Or, well, we didn't have to make that bond payment this year, so suddenly we're able to add all these items to our budget, even though we know we'll eventually need to take, it out, take out another bond. It is a never-ending cycle of borrowing from Peter to pay, to pay Paul, while always making sure it is the people of Hawkington who are to blame if something goes wrong. If only the town would meet our every demand, everything in the school budget would be perfect. I'm just the messenger. Uh, more insulting than all of that is the way the school administration acts as though the district is full of long-suffering and benevolent martyrs. Well, we really need three million a $3 million increase, but we knew the town wouldn't be able to support that, so we're only asking for a $1 million increase instead. Woe, woe is us having to do more with less. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the guilt tripping. I'm tired of playing the blame game. It's the job of the school administration to prioritize their budget based on what the town can sustainably provide them with. It's like cutting your food budget to pay for your Lamborghini. In case you couldn't figure it out, the school's a Lamborghini. I'm tired of thinking up new ways to explain what the problem is. We need to stand up for the town. We need to stand up against gentrification that has been happening, is happening, and will continue to happen. I'm asking for the budget committee to please reject the, school, the school's proposed budget increase. Thank you, Jenny. You're welcome. Um, next is a, another letter that I received this afternoon, and Deb Norris has agreed to read it. Thank you, Deb. Dear Ms. Durant and Ms. Presinia, we understand that difficult decisions must be made when balancing budgets. As the chair of the school board and chair of the budget committee, we would like to ask you to consider revising the proposed elementary school library budget for next year. <coughs> school libraries play an important role in the development of competent students who are skilled in the multiple literacies needed in the 21st century. Saving funds by eliminating an elementary school <coughs> library assistant reduces student access to strong school library programs and denies equal access for all students to the shared resources and information skills instruction crucial for students to learn and thrive in the 21st century. The elementary school librarians are funded as half-time librarians. The other half they are funded as technology integrators. A reduction in the full-time library assistant will result in the following program changes. The library space will be closed when the librarian is teaching classes, leaving students without the flexibility to use the space at the time they need it during the school day. Student access to the Makerspace <coughs> program at Harold Martin <coughs> School will be significantly reduced or eliminated, and teachers will have significant challenges finding opportunities during the day to plan and collaborate with the librarian. Multiple studies have affirmed there is a clear link between school library media programs and student academic achievement. Across the United States, research has shown that students in schools with good school libraries learn more, get better grades, and score higher on standardized test scores than their peers in schools without libraries. Cutting back on the district's library media program at a time when students need more help with literacy, not less, and, I'm sorry, and more instruction in dealing with the effective use of information could cause a serious effect on students' achievement. Certified licensed library media specialists are trained to select excellent resources to encourage student reading and support the curriculum, to give instruction in 21st century skills, and to co-teach with every teacher, every teaching style, and every learning style. The library media assistants support this ability by performing the daily operations necessary to keep the library open and running while the librarians are in the classroom. 
These duties would fall to the librarians to perform. Additionally, the assistants are a constant presence in the library and know all of the students and staff in the school, supporting the community's social and emotional learning. Consistency, connections, and relationships are important for students in this age group. We would like to propose adding the elementary library assistant position back into next year's budget, which would increase the proposed budget by 31033 We understand these decisions are difficult. There is a lot of pressure to decrease our per pupil cost. Keeping the assistant position in our budget will ensure our students have equitable access to the resources and instruction needed to be successful. Please let us know if we can provide you with more information. Respectfully submitted, Michelle Marino, the HMS Librarian and Technology Integrator. Michelle Bowman, HMS Library Assistant. Karen Locke, MSS Librarian and Technology Integrator. Kim Sink, MMS Library Assistant. Donna Zecker, HMHS Librarian, and Charlene Betts, HMHS Library Assistant. Thank you, Deb. Okay, we will open it, uh, the presentation by Bill Chapin uh, to the audience. If you have questions, come up to the mic, please. This one right here. This one right here. Very quick question. How much is the savings for cutting that library assistant? The amount that was mentioned in the letter is 31033 So if we had an extra 31000 plus, we could keep that library assistant. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. I think Bill has an answer. I, I, yes, please. Hi, I'm Cheryl Morse, 396 Park Avenue, right up the road up there. Um, I remember last year when we were at the uh, bond hearing um, discussions, we were uh, informed that the state had a two-year moratorium on state aid. Well, I was very disappointed, as we all were, and sort of put it out of my radar. Um, it was called to my attention today that moratorium ended for 2020. So have you applied since we've not certainly not started construction or even um, secured the bond? Has application been made for state aid from the state aid building fund? And just Even though it's construction and the bond have not occurred. Can I ask when you were told that? So what they do is every other year is when you have to submit an application. Unfortunately, we did not have the information available to us to be able to submit, um, and so we were not able to do that. I believe it would have had to have been submitted last fall. Um, because the moratorium ended in September, even though the money right. wasn't becoming available until January. They told us that we did not need to submit an application because they weren't going to be accepted. We were not the only other community. There was other communities that were told the exact same. Oh, I'm sure. There was only a few million dollars available, and it was a timing. We pursued every avenue, we were told. It was a timing thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. No, go Rita Blanchard from Barton Corner Road. Uh, I'm a mom, a housewife, run a house. I can make budget cuts, and it's extraordinary to me the things that we can't do without. Um, I got two very successful young men that graduated from the school without all this. Um, 
those K to 12 schools, those 52 schools that were mentioned that were right smack dab in the middle of, are they all rural towns, just like ours with no industry hub and taxpayers? Uh, or is it like London and That Nashville? was, um, th those are numbers in terms of, of just looking at the expense side. So they were, they were light districts of a K through 12, single SAU, right? So, so they're only one, they're only one town. Um, so it goes from Bedford to uh, Groveton, I mean, it's all over the place. It's 52 K through 12. Some are small towns, mm -hmm. some have, have um, industry like Bedford with a K-12. So 52 in K through 12 have a high school, have an elementary And so, and so revenue side. Right. They have revenue. I know those southern towns have revenue. I'm sorry. That was the a number of, co of cost <laughs> per a cost per student. Right. That that chart just was showing the expenses side. Okay. Um, early in the presentations, the library assistant was cut. We just mentioned somebody just mentioned they wanted her back, him back. You had presented that we could put that person's position in the contingency fund. Um, perhaps if we felt there was a need, um, if there was enough of a need for that, um, we could utilize some of the contingency fund to use that library assistant. But Is that that would be, you know, at the at the jurisdiction of the superintendent. I mean, the superintendent, we we could recommend where where we, where we would like to see those particular funds being spent. But the superintendent would determine where you know, the best place would be for that to be used. When something comes out of that contingency fund, mm -hmm. how is that decision made? Does somebody just write a check? Or does that come before you guys? Or does it go before the selectmen? How does that happen? That'll have the selectmen. So that'll, <laughs> that'll go in front of the school board. So it's, very, it's a very transparent piece that will be, you know, it will need to be approved at a school board meeting to be able to make that transfer. And, and there will be some discussion about it. Um, you know, we have this contingency fund for a particular, you know, for, for, you know, basically for, you know, the, the money that we raise, the money that's in there, the superintendent will make an argument as to why we need to use it, and it will be up to the school board to vote to whether we want to use it in that manner or not. Okay, good. So my next, is that the same you guys got to educate me here. I'm kind of new to this game. I quit playing in like 2004. Okay. Um, is the general fund, is that this contingency fund? That's different. The gen fund. general operating fund, or is ge the, ge in the general operating budget, what we're raising for, okay, that those, those pieces are, are spent on how the superintendent sees things to run his school. I mean, that, that's how, that's how that, that basically is gone. We, we, we give superintendent jurisdiction to use money from, you know, the operating budget. That's yep. his budget. But contingency fund is separate. Okay, because I'm he, thinking the contingency fund is what we used to call the general fund. Is it the slush fund? I recognize that term, too. No, it, contingency <laughs> is, is, is a fund that we would raise money for, again, anticipating things or trying to anticipate things that we haven't budgeted for in the operating budget. So we currently do not need five sections of kindergarten. We currently do not need four sections of third grade, okay? Um, we currently are budgeting for three sections of sixth grade. If we get an increase of teacher, if we get an increase of, of students, yep. you know, that come into each, okay, we're not gonna take that from operating. S the superintendent would need to come to the school board and say, hey guys, you know, we have an increase in eight kids on the second grade going into third grade class. I really feel it is in the best interest, you know, to have that four sections as opposed to the three. We're just, we're, we're contingent, we're, okay. we're putting no, money aside. I think aside. that's what we used to call it back in the old days, the general fund. That being said, yeah. where we might need to like shuffle teachers around or push the desks together because of extra kids. Yes. Okay, how many kids, I asked this at a meeting a couple weeks ago. We have 10, I was told, tuition students. Roughly, yeah. That pay $15,000 a year. We saw up on this board, people, 
you and I are paying $17,775 a student. I'm horrible at math. I can see this deficit. Um, that being said, we guesstimated that roughly $150,000 was going into a fund from 10 tuitions at 15 grand. Who's, where is that $150,000? The $150,000 is a, another line item, okay, that the voters will vote on as a, as a separate fund. And I think that the reason why we kept it in contingency is we wanted to keep, it, keep those dollars as transparent as we possibly could. That's not going into the operating budget. It isn't, it isn't a situation where we're going to raise it and then we don't need it type of situation and then find some other place to spend it. That is a fund that's going to be kept separate that if a few things that might happen down the road, if they hit, we will need that contingency. It's just So it's that 150 grand is going into the contingency fund. Correct. So right now we're going to be at 300 grand in that contingency fund. So let's talk revenue a little bit. So um, the tuition, the tuition youngsters, the, that comes in as pure revenue. That is, that is all oh, the down the line, I didn't see it. So it's, it's, okay. it's in our revenue yeah. sheet. If you look at our revenue sheet, okay, it's for tuition it. students. Now it's okay. all, not every student pays $15,000 because we have a program that reduces the cost for teachers. And we believe having teacher students from out of town in our schools is really good for teachers and it's good for our community. And it is, it is pure profit. So when we take when we take a student in, there's not a commensurate fifteen thousand dollars of cost to go with it. That's just a revenue add. Now the okay, board, wait, stop. You're telling me it's not for profit. So it's the, the teachers' childrens are not for profit. They, um, they get, you said they get a discount. They are not considered they, a profit. They, they get a discount, but that money that comes in is additional revenue. Yes. And it doesn't change our expense side. We don't add another teacher because of this. It's just revenue that's, coming in. That's where I'm going with this. So right. Are we going to need another student, another so, teacher because we've got tuition? That's a great question. That's a great. That's a great. That's a great question. My other question so is, oh, that, Rita. Wait, Rita, start. you've gone we'll over your three minutes. Well, we we can answer. We we can answer that. Whenever you have a tuition student that comes in, that comes to the school board, and we determine if there's a seat. If there's you know if we are at Again, we're not going to tuition in four kids in that third grade class, okay, only to use uh, contingency to pay for an extra teacher. Does that make, does that make sense? So it does. It, 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 we, we're, not, we, we're looking, what Steve's trying to say is that if we have empty seats in a particular class and it makes sense to have a tuition kid come in, Steve's saying, we're not getting another teacher for that. We're not needing to rent another space. We're getting another kid. So that, in a sense, is sheer revenue. I mean, it's sheer, sheer profit you know, that's, that's coming in, regardless of what the dollar number might be. Do these teachers' children that come in as students at a discount, is that part of their benefit package? It is. Uh, it is not in the collective bargaining agreement. We wanted the, uh, the board wanted the flexibility to be able to apply that when it was appropriate as opposed to an entitlement within a contract. And so how much of a discount do they get? It depends on the number of years and the number of students. So if you're here for the first five years, things like 50% they pay. And then if it's a teacher here for like 10 to 20 years, it like goes to 30 or 40%. I think it's so important to point out that the discount is not strictly, you don't have transportation for these kids. So that, that's part right. of the differential. No, I'm, I'm looking at classroom size and... But it's, it's a good point. It's a very good point. Um, we, the board wants to make sure that we don't accept it to it and require another teacher. So we only accept it to group. Perfect. And that's with tuition and teacher students. It's for that program. Okay. So I'm, I'm not clear on why we're asking for another 150 grand in that contingency fund if we're going to have in there um, tuition money. So, so yeah, if we have kids that are in town, like, you know, if, if somebody moves into town tomorrow, mm -hmm. they're going to have a second grade, they're going to have a second grade or third grade kid. So we could have 10 families move into town before, you know, we're, we're planning our budget now. These kids could move into town. The word's out on our tax bills. Let me just tell you <laughs> yeah. that. That won't be happening, I doubt. Maybe. Uh, but that, that, again, if it doesn't happen, we don't use it. 
but we keep asking for it. It's just in the event we need it. I like receipts. I like yeah, receipts. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone, Cheryl? Is there anyone that wants to speak before Cheryl? Cheryl, you have spoken <laughs> once, okay? Yeah. Hi. Hi. I'm Sabrina Dunlap, Wold Hill Road. Um, I want to start by saying thank you, since I think a lot of people don't realize you all are volunteers, school board's volunteers, select board is volunteers, all the committees in town that make this town a great place, we're all volunteers. So um, I just wanted to say thank you. I know this thank is, you. This is a, not the easiest thing. Um, so I don't have, I don't have anything super helpful, I don't think, in terms of dealing with our tough situation. I just have some, some thoughts I'd like to share. Um, I am here to ask you to support the budget as proposed. I think any further reductions will have a really negative impact on our students and our schools. I attended a PTA meeting last week where Steve Chamberlain walked us through the budget and we heard there's basically nothing left to trim. I actually think the reductions go too far as we are losing teachers and programming, um, but I understand this is a process of compromise and it seems like this is the best we're going to do. I'd also like to briefly address a few of the narratives I've heard around town about the schools and taxes. We can disagree on where and how to spend money, but the blanket statements people toss around about irresponsible spending by the schools is misguided and not helpful. It's easy to sit on the outside and complain. It is easy to say, oh, we should just make more cuts without, without thinking about what that actually means for people. Um, but running a small school district in a property poor town in a state that does basically nothing to support public education is not easy. And at the very least, the superintendent, principals, teachers, and other administrators deserve our respect. There are also a lot of fixed costs and a lot of unknowns each year. We just heard about some of them, like how many students will we have next year? Um, as for fixed costs, there's nothing we can do about them. We're contractually and legally obligated to cover certain costs and services as a school. This is out of the school board's and administrator's hands. Finally, I'd like to point out, we have been having this debate for a very long time. It's a challenge we share with many other towns, including towns with much bigger tax bases. Um, my mom recently gave me a bunch of old Concord monitors from when she and my dad went to middle school in Hopkinton. Uh, they're both almost 70, so these were from like the 1960s. I read an article, they were having the same <laughs> debate. Some of you might remember, they were having the same debates back then. Um, and I think, you know, things are only getting more difficult. We live in a state where more and more costs are pushed down onto municipalities. And I, my point in saying this is that we live in a state that neglects education, and that is hard. Um, I mean, you know, some of you have said none of this is easy. And I know because we've had to make hard decisions on the select board uh, and doing our budget too. And the tax burden on our residents, I'm a resident too, we're all residents, is a huge concern. But we are just in a very challenging position. There are not many places to go for relief. I would encourage everyone to bring this issue to the State House and vote for reps and senators and a governor who supports public schools in New Hampshire. I would end by saying please approve the budget as proposed. We have squeezed and squeezed the schools. Um, I think any further reductions will be incredibly detrimental to the well-being of our students. I would also add we cannot pit the old against the young, parents against non-parents. We all love this town. We all take care of each other here. Uh, this is just a really tough situation. Um, but again, I think the proposed budget is the best we can do in striking a balance. And we are so fortunate to have such high-performing schools in a community that cares about them, and I hope we'll keep it that way. Thank you. Uh, good Hi. evening. Amanda Gilman, uh, 168 Westridge Circle. Uh, first, I apologize in advance if my message comes across as being harsh or too pointed, for that is not at all my intent. Rather, I hope to give everyone some thoughts to ponder and consider over this budget and future budgets. I'm not going to belabor the pros and cons of all the hard work that our fabulous school board members have put in here, the difficult decisions that they have already made. I simply seek to pull everyone back and consider the big picture. 
in my heart, I agree wholeheartedly, 100% with Sabrina Dunlap. I really do. But in my head, the following are the thoughts in my head. I'm afraid that we as a town are staring down the face of a fiscal crisis. It is looming and growing larger by the year. More specifically, by the 20 years that we have to repay in the future, the nearly $10 million bond. Next year, we begin bond repayment at an estimate of nearly $850,000. So our next year's school budget begins with $850,000. That bond repayment schedule stays relatively level for the next five years. It slowly decreases to $750,000 after five years. This means for the next five, our school budget is automatically going up a minimum of three quarters of a million dollars each year. And as I have heard said surrounding the budget before, we haven't even bought our pencils yet. Nor have we figured in the rising teacher salaries for the next three years due to the increased compensation required to shift the health care cost, to shift to health care cost sharing. Mind you, this is a necessary expense. I agree with it. It brings us closer in line with the health care benefits offered by other districts, whereby the taxpayer no longer funds 100% of the health care. But it's an added future expense. So those are the given fixed costs. But what if we grow? What then? As I see it, we have already outgrown the bond that will begin construction next year. Remember, a majority of that nearly $10 million is being spent on maintenance, neglected maintenance, from the last 10 years. Over a, only a small amount of that money is actually being used for growth. May I also point out that the four classrooms being built are already accounted for today, meaning we need those classrooms yesterday. The additional four classrooms allow for art and music to once again have proper classrooms rather than being instructed in the children's homeroom from a cart. And it will allow a second grade class to actually have a proper classroom again instead of a 500 square foot half size room that I call a closet where they currently occupy this year. The teachers will likely get this closet back as their break room with the addition and then there will be one additional classroom. So if one of the Harold Martin school grades increases to five, say kindergarten, already projected at 86, we have space. Or perhaps the special instruction groups can once again return to learning in a classroom rather than on a table in the hallway outside the library. And that is if we do indeed get four classrooms out of the project and one isn't lost in renovation. We're hoping for four. Regardless, the point is this addition is not a plan for the future. It is merely making up for our lack of planning in the past. It is a catch-up bond that we will have to pay for with future funds. And while I'm going down this road of what if, what if our 20 plus, I can't remember the exact number of years, unfortunately, uh, year old underground oil tank at the, at the high school that we discussed last year suddenly fails and needs to be replaced. This is a legitimate concern. I admit, I was definitely one of the citizens and strongly opposed replacement of the tank for over $100,000 at the time, and I stand by that decision. But nonetheless, failure of this tank is a real possibility for the future. It's not imminent, but it's something we need to plan for. What if the classes heading to Maple Street School in the next five years grow, and we need more classrooms there too? I'll end the what if exercise here, but it brings me to my final point, planning for our future. If any of these other or any other what ifs occur, we cannot afford another bond. Can you imagine another bond payment on top of this one? We can't support it. Several leading bodies, including the National School Board Association, recommends annual savings of 2 to 4% of the replacement cost of all facilities for continued repair and replacement and basic maintenance be set aside. This year's budget has $140,000 going to the maintenance trust, the most we have ever done, with plans to promptly spend it all, thus leaving us with $72,000. Now this money does need to be spent. I agree 100%. That's not the point. Rather, it's that $140,000 is hardly 2 to 4% of the replacement cost of our facilities. My issue with this year's budget is nearly the same as my issue with last year's budget and the 10 budget years before this one. We are not planning for the future. Yes, the superintendent began a capital improvements plan last year, a huge, huge step really. But if we don't fund it and save adequately for the future, having a plan doesn't matter. I submit to you 
fellow parents of Hopkinton School students, fellow taxpayers, and our town leaders that being what is often referred to as pro-school is not only about providing for the children in school today, but also planning for the children of our future. I'm a parent of two young children in the school system, and I want them to have it all, I really do, but not on the backs of the future students. Our current students in HMS and all three buildings, really, have less than ideal facilities right now, in part because the previous 10 years consisted of mostly spending in the moment, with 750 to one million plus dollar budget increases for several of recent budget years. I implore you to all change your thinking of what pro-school really means, thinking about your own kids today as much as it means thinking about the children of the next several years. We need a few budget lean years to even begin to adequately plan for the future. Our current level of spending increase is not sustainable in our little town. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the gentleman up there, please. Thanks very much. I'm Rob Dappis. I'm from uh, Woodwell's Garrison. So I'd like to start by thanking all the everybody who's volunteered their time for this process. I really appreciate that, and I appreciate how civil I've seen, uh, for the most part, everybody be to each other, even as they disagree on these uh, tough questions. I will say that I feel like the mocking tone in that letter that you read, Ms. Haynes, has no place in this, this setting. I feel like if there's any place where we should be able to be civil to each other, it's right here where we are looking each other in the eye, and so I hope we'll We'll all try to sort of rise to that level. Um, you know, I, I don't envy uh, you the decision that you're in uh, with these very difficult choices. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I, I watched the comments from the last budget committee meeting, and, and Mr. Houston, I think the comments that you raised about the changing chemistry of the town are very real, and they worry me. And so, um, so it makes this stuff uh, all that much more difficult, especially when you look at the, the costs that are coming. But I think the example of the library assistant illustrates the kind of tough choices that the superintendent uh, and his staff have had to make along the way and that the school board has had to make. And uh, you know, I th I'm sure those aren't decisions that they took lightly. And, um, and so I, I didn't hear any kind of hyperbole about uh, you know, stealing milk and cookies from children. I didn't hear uh, any kind of indications of sort of irresponsible short-term uh, spending in the description of the budget, I thought it was very uh, sort of even-handed and, uh, and rational. So I guess I would ask that for those uh, people who do feel like this is an, uh, either an irresponsible budget or that some, bu some cuts could be made without any uh, sort of real impact on the quality of education, to quantify that and to say, you know, where um, we're Bill's talking about a kindergarten with uh, five sections, if there's going to be something near 100 kids, what they think an acceptable uh, number of students is. I know that there are uh, elementary school classes where there's 30 or 35 children to a classroom. And uh, if you've ever spent time with that many kids at a time, I don't think that's a healthy environment either. So um, as I said, these are really tough choices. I appreciate that. I think this is a responsible budget, as tough as it is. I think the kinds of relief that uh, Mr. Trump mentioned for the seniors and disabled, while they're a very imperfect way to try to mitigate the changes to the chemistry of the town. I think that they're the best that we can do while we wait for some kind of structural change to head off the, the crisis uh, that may be coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other people that would like to speak for the first time? Hi, my name is Sabrina Stanwood, and I'd like to thank everyone for the effort um, that they've put into all this, um, and thanks for listening to public comments. I do urge uh, the budget committee to vote for the school operating budget as put forward. Please do not cut any more out of it. Um, let's focus our efforts on increasing state and federal aid for education. I am willing to work on that. I'm willing to help out with that. Um, but my five-year-old daughter, you know, goes to school here, so please, um, please don't cut any more of it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any other people that would like to speak for the first time? No, Cheryl was next for the second time, and then I'm Bonnie, okay? <clears throat> Thank you. This is brief. Um, just to clarify, it, is it, am, do I understand correct that we charge all tuition in <coughs> students the same price, whether they're students of children of teachers or not? No. No, okay. Is it renegotiated each year as our student prices change? Board sets the tuition for uh, students, and the teacher's one is a percentage of that. Okay. So it does change based on um, a, a formula. What about, um, and this may be somewhere in the revenue stream, and I haven't seen it, what about reciprocity agreement? Um, I happen to live next door to a revolving house, um, and I mean that respectfully, and they, as soon as the kids graduate, they leave town, it fills back up again. Uh, the current family that left, one student is still here. Um, and will, because they love the school, and they will, they couldn't find a house in Hopkins and they wanted it. She will continue to be educated here. Um, her parents are paying taxes in another local town. Do we have any agreement with those communities who are collecting the property taxes off that family that they should be reimbursing us for not sending that child to their school district? So the board, anytime a student is not in residence in this community, the board has to approve that. Now, there is a, a, a practice of, for example, if a, a student was a senior, a senior year, the board can waive tuition for a senior because if they go to another school, that would change their graduation future. So uh, the, the only situations that I'm aware of are established residency, and we have a process for that, or out of the, the board approves every student who's not resident attending our school. This particular incident, and, and it's, it's not, it's not um, pertinent at all to the situation to get into it too detailed, but the point being, um, and I can understand a senior because of the timelines of when school budgets happened, it's tricky as to whether or not you would be able to get from another school district the full amount for their senior year and, and you're really splitting hairs. But when you take a child in, a child, a high school student in that has two to th or three years left in the school district, then I don't understand why um, we have not negotiated with other school districts. Okay, we have this student. You will at least pay us back from your tax rate. Any student that is non-resident in this community is either paying tuition right. or it's been waived for a circumstance like the senior. So I don't, I'm not aware of any student that is, is living in another town okay. going to school here that is not either paying tuition or you know, something approved by the board. And the amount that they pay is determined every year? Determined every year. By the year. board. Okay, thank you. Barney? I hope I'm not wearing out my welcome down here. <laughs> um, I would be very interested to hear some feedback from both boards, the select board and the school board, about what Sabrina said about the broken function of state education, state aid to education. Um, and the woman in the green jacket who has already left, I don't remember her name. But it seems to me that that is the missing component, and we go round and round and round about trying to get blood out of a stone on a local level to fund public education when the state is failing us. And I moved here, I, I'm from New Hampshire originally, had been living in Vermont for 25 years in one of the towns that was called a gold town. It was a wealthy town. We had property taxes, we had state income tax, we had sales tax, we had the whole shebang. And it was a lot cheaper for me to live there in Vermont with all that in a big house on five acres of land than it is for me to live here all in with the property taxes, even though we don't have state income tax. And at, there was a meeting of concerned taxpayers the other night, and there was a man, Ralph, I believe, um, who, I, if I understood this correctly, they moved here from Washington State. Um, same thing. 
that they have a lot of taxes in Washington State, but it is cheaper for them to live there, and they had very good school districts than it is here. So my point is, other states have figured this out. Other states have figured out how people can live there and not be property taxed to death and still get good education and, and still have other forms of income. So I've never heard any feedback from the boards about how you guys are working. Our state reps, Mel Myler and Dave Luno, are the chair and vice chair of the Education Committee in the House of Representatives. If I understand it correctly, Dave is chairing a, a state education commission to look into what are the problems and how can we fix them. What are you guys as our leaders doing to work with them and keep bringing that to their attention that we need a change on the state level? I would really like to hear some feedback on that. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I go first, I guess. Um, well, I, certainly, Dave, Dave Luno and Mel Myler have been um, involved in education for a long period of time. So I, I think they, if anyone knows what's you know what's needed, and uh, those two are there. So I, I feel confident about those two. Um, but I, I think Michelle has always said we, you know, we we budget for you know the worst uh, uh, and, and then hope for the best and that's sort of what we've been doing and I think that when you look at the state and what used to be provided by the state so the path that we've run on particularly with you know retirement health care and then building aid as as all it was all there at one particular point and then was was taken away and and, and, and many you know you remember years ago um, building aid was you know, said by John Lynch would be going away, and then we were going to potentially bring it back. So, I think repair on buildings uh, was neglected for years, thinking the state would would eventually come back, and they never really have. So, I think what you say is valid. The revenue side has always been a problem. It's what you know, uh, again, would solve a lot of our problems here. And uh, I think the more we, you know, voice and and people take notice of this town and and their you know, willingness to uh, to pay for schools, but but understand that a problem is is coming down the road. I, I think the better. But uh, we we do talk about these things. But we, yeah, again, we we don't know. I mean, we just don't know. So uh, yeah. yeah, and I, I guess speaking more for myself than the select board, but I believe that the rest of the select board would agree with me. Yes, we have a broken tax system. Uh, <clears throat> yes, we would like some other systems so well on the town side so we get more assistance for infrastructure um, and you know i've personally spoken to our state reps our state senator our uh, executive counselor about the situation um, you know I, I i guess that's as far as i've gone and, and it has come up at the budget committee the same level of frustration i say Thank you. Yes. Hi, Laura Johnson, Main Street. Um, I just want to state my opinion about the, um, as a former public school teacher, coach, resident, and very opinionated educator, I don't agree with all the decisions of the school board. Um, but I do think, because I can't change past spending, I can't change things that happened in the past, and I do have kids in the school, I would like to see the budget passed as it has been presented. Um, I also would like to encourage the schools and the school board to look outside the box for solutions in future years. Um, I can personally find a few ways that I think things could be switched around, as I'm sure a lot of other people, to save in spending a little bit. Um, but I do think as things are presented, they should be passed this year. Thank Your you. Name? Laura Johnson. Thank you. Any other? I'm going to beat that tuition horse to a death. Okay, we've got, hold on. Go ahead, go ahead, honey. <laughs> Um, I was looking at our revenue, I, and I know I was told at the uh, last meeting that we're 10-ish, 
is exactly what I was told. Yes. Uh, students being tuitioned <coughs> in at fifteen grand a student. No, it, that's the piece. There, that I'm sorry. Is, yes. I'm sorry. That's the piece that is not. Remember, some of these are on reduced tuition for children of non-resident teachers. Correct. I, I was unaware of that. But so, okay. So because the the profit margin here, the revenue is only seventy grand for that. Right. right? So about half of the people are on reduced tuition. Um, another thought, just on something you just said, is it the practice of this board to sit around and wait for somebody to come help us while we fix stuff? What do you mean? Are you, he, he said, you said something about when John Lynch was governor, that uh, we thought some aid that went away was going to come back, and that may be why we haven't. I think I was talking more statewide, but when you are thinking that building aid goes away, but the promise from the state level is it'll come back. Why would we raise and immediately, why would we look to raise locally $10 million for a building project when we potentially could apply for something in future years? Right, I'm not talking about the $10 million building project. I'm talking about the repairs that were not done, general maintenance that wasn't done to our buildings. Okay, well, we have general maintenance funds that we use, and we all have deferred maintenance. I mean, I'm sure you have deferred maintenance on your house, as I do with mine. Um, Only as long as my husband can stand the nagging. That's how long it's deferred. <laughs> okay. um, but uh, we do have a maintenance Sometimes and repair long. fund uh, that we raise money for in anticipation of things we got to fix during the course of the year. Okay, because just the list that I've been seeing is is – you know, why wouldn't you fix the roof before it got to the stage it's at now? Again, it's... That's a defer. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, and it's very costly now to do it versus maintaining it. I'm not going to disagree with you. Okay. Um, what are we going to do moving forward with routine maintenance? Is somebody going to be overseeing routine maintenance? I mean, how does this work? I don't know. Um, if my roof leaked... <clears throat> That would I mean, be again, Oops, you me. know, we have we have fixated the number of resources that we have, uh, as every family does. You right, know? but every year we give money for maintenance. Every year. Right, but um, we try to anticipate what future costs will be to fix some of the things, like uh, like like an AC unit or something, or a, 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 a leaking roof. Right, I think the the leaking roof situation is we have a more we have a larger building project that's coming online. So we don't want to potentially, you know, okay. if you're going to get a new roof, you know, you don't want to sink thousands and thousands of dollars. Right, to if we potentially don't get that project, what are we going to do? I'm working really hard to get I this budget we, voted down. So I my think. next question is, <laughs> what are you guys going to do if at the school meeting this budget is voted down? I'm like beating on doors, people going vote this down it's irresponsible right so I think the superintendent has tiers that if if we have a budget that gets voted down mm -hmm. okay I think the superintendent has given a clear idea of what you know potentially that would look like and what our school what impact that would have on the schools and the voters would have to make that decision whether they want to uh, go down that path or not okay so that's that's so how do we find out what that path is before town meeting how I do we think get those tiers I think we okay. have them on the website, and I think all these meetings, every meeting that Steve's ever had with the school board, with the budget committee, um, the budget committee's meetings, these are all public. I mean, oh, I know. Are, no, I know. Because if I'm not here, I'm online. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I'm always so, so I just, so. I, I would, I only say that because we went at, you know, we've had meetings at great length talking about yeah. the repercussions of a reduced budget, and despite that. You know, the school board felt it necessary to reduce Steve's budget by 300000 when he initially presented it. So just to give you an indication, uh, those things that were reduced were known by the school board. We were very informed at the time by our superintendent what the costs, you know, would be. And we still decided to, um, you know, um, make the hard decisions. So it's, it's not easy, you know, um, but... Um, 
this isn't um, we aren't driving what was the Lamborghini I mean it should be clear that that we're not this isn't just you know the the most anybody can spend you know I mean we are aware or we we are very aware of the tax ramifications in this town because I have talked to several citizens that tell me their house they're going to be out of here by January 1st and I and I have been told and I hear it too I've been told by someone you know, you know, that maybe this is not the town for my husband and I You've been here almost 40 years. I, you, and you think so, I don't hear it either. I've heard, well, heard, you know, I hear it from both sides. I think it was well, well, it was, you had, uh, I'm you just had, saying, I'm working this hard to make sure that we figure out a way to do a budget that is sustainable for this town. So I appreciate that. Where everybody would go look for that. Appreciate that. Hi, Amanda Gilman again. Um, here I go again, harping on facilities, repair and maintenance. Uh, but I would like to speak to the state of New Hampshire cost per pupil uh, by district um, that Mr. Chapin mentioned. Um, we're ranked number 27 out of the 52 schools K through 12 in New Hampshire. And on the surface, this looks like we were actually smack dab in the middle. It looks like we're really doing a great job, meaning we're providing a quality education uh, with the budget that we have. Um, but I submit, and I submit that we have an above average education even, um, but it looks like on that graph that we're uh, providing it at an average cost. And I'm wondering if we should look closer. Look into the spending on facilities, repair, and maintenance. For I, this same fiscal year, I think it paints a different picture if you compare the other towns in this graph to ours. For example, in this, this is fiscal year 1819 on this ranking, where it came from, Bo, for example, who ranks lower than us uh, in terms of cost. It, they do a better job at cost per pupil. Uh, in the K through, to, through 12 schools, they're number 10 and we're 27. They spent 2.1 million uh, in their facilities line. Uh, however, that includes wages and it's hard for me to compare apples to apples and I haven't given Mr. Chamberlain the benefit of the doubt and, and had a chance to chat, chat with him about what we actually spent uh, that year. But when I look back uh, at our facilities line, it's instead of 2.1 million, it's 1.7 million. And when I subtract out uh, what appears to be supervision and operation of facilities, is that wages or no? Oh, Michelle. That's wages and benefits, yes. And then operating building services. Okay, gas. I'm sorry. So is, is operating building services, does that, you're saying that gas and all these things are, are all wrapped up. up. Okay, so Bose was much more separated and I could pull out gas and I could pull out electricity. Uh, but theirs was nine, $935,000 that they spent in that year um, on their facilities repair and maintenance. I don't know what we spent, but I submit that perhaps it was a slightly less amount. And if you figure that back in, it doesn't put a smack dab in the middle anymore. We're not spending enough on our buildings. Thank you. We will close public testimony. May I? Yes. Okay. My name is Steve Reddy. I live at 260 Kearsarge Ave. Um, I'm definitely not advocating putting the $300,000 back into the budget. I think what the school board did and the budget committee ratified was prudent given the uh, mood of the town and the, you know, across the board increases that we all face in our budgets. However, I do think it's important for people to understand that our costs often that get cut are payroll because that's our largest cost. So I would just like to ask maybe the superintendent to explain exactly that $300,000. That did impact some people, did it not? We caught a teacher and a numeracy specialist, but perhaps just for the audience, if you could just explain the impact of that three hundred thousand dollar cut or reduction. Sure, sure I'm fine. But the uh, significant portion was a sixth grade teacher, was a library media assistant, even the numeracy assistant. I think those are the major components. The sixth grade, as Mr. Chapin spoke to, um, for uh, we believe best practices in sixth grade beginning the middle school model, math, English, science. History type uh, focus teachers that will be changed. Um, so that is the majority of the staffing issues in the $300,000 cut. I 
we also oh, we cut sections. Uh, we we cut uh, science sections at the high school. We cut, <coughs> we cut uh, sections at the high school. Those were our reductions. Okay, we're going to cut public testimony. We really did have to. Did they actually cut sections? No. Or did you cut the increase? So did you, did you actually take away existing sections of today? Or is it a lack of increase of sections for next year? Right. No, that, that's uh, in the high school. Uh, a science was one that was offered this year that we will reduce next year. Family consumer was an addition. We had 20 students who wanted family consumer on a wait list that didn't get it, so that's a section for us. So it was required by enroll by registrations and enrollment, but it would be an increase based on students who wanted the course. And would same thing. It was an addition, but it was an addition based on student interest that we would have staffed with our you know 15 to 20 kids. So was that three increase positions in one? So no, one current and two. Sure. Okay. Are we doing the section on public comments? We we have been doing public comments and 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 I asked if there were any people that had not talked one time and wanted to, and we didn't have any person, so we took some people that were talking for the second time, and so we really have to close because we have a lot of deliberation to do. Okay. Okay, but next time make sure you let us know that it's public comment, not because it says right on the end after the school public comment. I, I don't understand what you're saying, Frank. He says he missed public comment because it was wrong. Well, I don't know what the screen is saying because I'm not looking there, but I when after Ginny um, Haynes read a letter and Deb Norris, then I opened it up to uh, the audience for their participation and people have been standing up doing that so we have been doing that all along I asked if there were any uh, two people wanted to speak for the second time and I asked if there were any people that wanted to speak for the first time and I didn't get any person and then all of a sudden when I'm ready to close it then some people want to talk for the first time. That was on school issues, and we discussed questions on school issues, and that was continued. But what do you want to talk on? Just public comments. Okay, each one has had public comments. Each section of the budget. Pardon me? Okay, Frank, I don't know what you want to do. Come up to this mic and speak. Just trying to save you some grief. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's easier. Put your timer on. It's three minutes. Oh, you broke it, Frank. Sure. <laughs> that goes the budget. <laughs> Just work this way? Yep, that works. Much better. Okay, I just want to make some general comments on the uh, budget in general, on all budgets, as far as being way over budget, as far as the school and as far as the town. Taxes on the average home has gone up over $500 last year, and it looks like it's going to go up over $500 again this year on, on the average home which again will drive a lot more people out of town. And when people who own a fixed, but a fixed income, like Social Security or whatever, and have no children in school who leave town and sell their homes, usually it's to people with children and that bring more kids into the community. And the more kids you bring into the community, the higher the school budget will go. And this is a continuous cycle every year. When they first built it, when they first built the school, the average school budget was fifty dollars a year. The average budget was a hundred dollars a year for the town. It had, had a brand new high school, a, a new grade school. And everybody got along fine. We had plenty of industrial. It came 
You can go to the neighbors who's across the street. We had a paper mill going seven days a week and many other industrials. Now you're talking about bringing more industrials, but with the tax rate the way it is, nobody industrial is going to come to this town. People continue to move out. New people can come in with more students. And we will continue a cycle that in five years from now we come back here. There will be three or four more hundred kids in school. You're going to need more classrooms, more school, schools, more, more everything. And basically everything is the school department is overrated, not overrated, but is the main function of the town to improve the schools, increase the schools, cause more, get more people to come to town and put the kids in the school. It's going to continue and pretty soon the town is going to be just where nobody's going to be able to afford to live here anymore except the doctors and lawyers making two, three hundred thousand dollars a year. I know uh, you want a new fire truck. Yeah, I want a new car too, but I talked to Social Security and said, we ain't gonna help you. You're gonna have to wait till you earn the money. And there's a lot of towns that apply for fire trucks. I know Henneke applied for a new fire truck, Homeland Security, gave him four hundred something thousand dollars to a fire truck. Gave him hundreds of thousand dollars for bridge to nowhere. There's, there's room for in the wetland funds for confits, but nobody applying for anything in this town. All figures just on everything. But we just haven't got the funds. It's great to have tuition students, all the fellow students that came to town with tuition. We wouldn't have the problem. But unfortunately, when they moved to town, they had not the tuition. So basically, when I leave my house, which will probably be soon, where things are going, I'll be three more kids are coming to the town. And some of that's another sixty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, the people that are left are gonna have to add to their budget. And it's gonna continue to go on and on and on. This spending has got to stop. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will close public testimony. Thank you very much. We are going to take a break and then we will start deliberating on the budget.
budget committee and signing of forms. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna, I never ever have I'll share. We're going to take them in the same order that we did the hearing. Okay, so first we will go with the budget for the Hopkinton Village precinct. Okay, Tom, you're up. <laughs> Here. This is now the new one because of the time it's done. All right, right. We didn't know what to do. Right. Okay, so the, good. So I will just in a, in a what is yeah, no. folks? We are gonna folks. We are gonna Quiet. start our deliberation. So if you could just be a little quieter, please. Okay, we will start with the uh, Hopkinton Village precinct. And Tom, do you want to make a motion? Do you? Um, yeah, let's make a motion to approve the Hopkinton Village precinct budget. And what is the amount? A lot of pressure here. Just to make sure I don't mess it up. Uh, the amount is uh, $17,791. To be raised by taxes, right? Correct. Okay. Motion's been made for the uh, to approve the Hopkinton Village Precinct budget for $17,791. Is there a second to second that? Move. Seconded by uh, Jonathan. Jonathan. <clears throat> Discussion. Good job. Okay, are you ready for the question? Yep. Okay, all those in favor of approving the budget for the Hopkinton precinct of seventeen thousand seven ninety one, <coughs> say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, it's unanimous. Just a point of clarification. Is that for me? Money to be raised by taxes or the total to be appropriated for the budget. I think you need certainly the appropriations for the budget. Appropriations? I, I think that, that's the total. Is that correct? I think you need that one also. To raise and appropriate? Right. The, so the, the total. So you make a second motion. Total appropriations. Okay. Not is, just the money to be raised, but the right. total appropriations. Okay, what's cool. the total yeah. appro appropriations? Total appropriations is 108000 $277. So is that a motion? Yeah, so they can make a motion to appropriate. Okay. I'll second that too. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> okay, that's a new. Um, an approval by the Budget Committee. Next is the Kentucky uh, Village Precinct Budget. I move to approve the appropriations recommended of $513,860 to the Village Precinct. Second. Did you say raise Yes. Yeah. Did you did get the second raise. on that, Tammy? Yeah. Mark. I did not say raise an appropriate, which I should do. Okay. To so, raise an appropriate. So say it again, please. I move to raise an appropriate uh, recommended $513,860 for the Kentucky Village Precinct. And you second that, Jonathan? I still second. Yes. Okay. Sure. Or whoever it was, you. I'm sorry, Mark. I it was, was Mark. Mark. Sorry, no. Yeah. Don't jump in front of me. <laughs> it was Mark that did it. I'm sorry. I, I want the record to reflect that Mark Zankel seconded it. <laughs> you, you can fight over my articles. Okay. <laughs> and we will um, vote again. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Okay. The vote is in the affirmative. And I so declare it. Uh, so we've got two budgets under our belt. That's why we, that's why we always start with those two. You guys can't go home. Yeah, you can't go home. No, no. You've got to wait for the rest of us. 
Okay, now is the town operating sure. budget. <clears throat> yeah, ours is a little longer. Uh, I'll move that uh, the uh, budget committee approve Article 3 of the town meeting warrant, which is a bond issue for road, bridge, and culvert rehabilitation, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $2.2 million gross budget for the planning, design, rehabilitation, and construction of existing town roads, bridges, and culverts, and to authorize the issuance of not more than $2.2 million of bonds or notes in accordance with the provisions of the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33, as amended, to authorize the select board to apply for, obtain, and accept federal, state, or other aid, if any, which may be available for said project, and to comply with all laws applicable to said project, to authorize the select board to issue, negotiate, sell, and deliver such bonds or notes, and to determine the rate of interest thereon and the maturity and other items thereof, and to authorize the select board to take any other action or to pass any other vote relative thereto. And note that this is a, requires a two-third vote of the uh, at town meeting. Thank you. <coughs> If I don't have to read them, that's great. <laughs> well, no, well, no, that then we get it really on the. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, read, I'll read, it. To read it. Okay. So, Thank you. Thank you. Second. A second by Bill Chapin, Jr. Is it appropriate time for a little discussion? Yes. Okay. I, I just wanted to say that um, back in June of last year, June fourteenth, we discussed tax rates, and um, this is a quote, as part of carrying out its responsibility, meaning ours, of promoting a responsible and acceptable tax burden, the Hopkinton Budget Committee would like to offer initial guidance to the select board and Hopkinton School District in anticipation of the 2020 and 2021 budgeting and associated contract negotiations. Looking forward three years, we currently recommend adherence to a maximum of 4% a year net tax increase. That was something we talked about. And I just wanna say how I feel about this process, and it's not just the, it's the town and the school. We're budgeting by crisis with no end in sight, and we have substantial known increases in 2021 and 21, 22, the years ahead. Like climate change, we may not like it, but this is our reality. And I think when we get to this point in the process and, and things are over the queue and we don't think about it, we don't have the will to go to the state and start working on this and fixing it. <clears throat> I, I think we've informally gone to the state. Um, and you, you mentioned climate change. That's one of the reasons we have the culvert issues. Right. I'm just saying, I'm just... Uh, yeah, and, and the 4%, uh, I raised that with the select board, yeah. you know, many times that that was the direction I was hearing. Yeah. Our operating expense budget is uh, 5 point something percent, but that includes the uh, shared uh, money that we'd be getting back from the precinct. So actually our operating expense portion of the budget is in the fours. Uh, it's the other items in the, uh, the fixed asset, let me call it, category that uh, uh, are, are crisis items that have you know, driven ours up to the 7% range. Well, I but I appreciate your comments, yeah, certainly. I, I think we get to this point and once things go through and are finished, we don't have the, the will to keep mm -hmm. pushing forward and going to where we need to go to the state or the residents yeah. of the town because we're just going to face this again next year. Mm -hmm and it never gets yeah. solved. Yeah. We, we are using the same formula and we're still getting yeah. the same result. Okay, I, I, I totally agree with you. Um, and that was one of the reasons I, in the presentation, mentioned, you know, areas we are looking to expand the revenues, you know, by getting a, uh, a part-time uh, economic development uh, uh, position to hopefully bring in more tax revenues that we're working you know, and trying to help out with the solar array to get more tax revenues in without increasing expenses. Uh, 
the select board is extremely aware and you know we're doing what we can facing the situation as we I have it. Had to say it. No, I, I, I appreciate your comments. I, I think that everybody on the select board would agree with your comments. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Can I ask one, one question about, about the bond? Sure. What's, what's the maximum length of time that you think that that work might go over? The, uh, the work um, for the culverts, I would assume, would be uh, two years, two more years. or less. That's what the other bond was, wasn't it? The work what, was the, done the, over. Um, it was. It lasted what four years to com totally use up the first bond. Just, just about, just yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. This this should happen more quickly though. Yeah. Since yeah. Yes. Yesterday. <clears throat> Did you want to say something, Mark? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I mean, I think the, um, the thing that really stuck with me in talking about the roads this year was, you know, that there's seven and a half million, give or take, of road uh, road, road culverts, road bridges, culverts et cetera. That needs to be done. And with the cost of money being so low right now, you know, we should bond as much as the town could handle right now because the cost of money is incredibly cheap and the cost of road construction, bridge construction, is going up significantly and has for the past few years and is likely to continue. And so, you know, I'm in support of this. I wish we had the wherewithal to do more, but I don't think we can right now. I think the select board was very responsible in thinking about how much can we put forward given the other needs of the town. Right. I mean, one of our essential things on the select board side was the affordability. You know, what kind of an increase in the tax rate could we realistically, yeah. you know, seek. And uh, that was one half of our driving issue. The other half was the needs. But to, but to Mark's point, um, regardless of affordability, they have, they have to be done. I mean, it is of your opinion that they will need to be done in the next three <clears throat> to five years, right? The, 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 the culverts are the most important. And, you know, then we'll be able relying on the uh, expertise of Dan Blanchett and the DPW to, to let us know, you know, what order things have to be addressed in. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, there's a possibility that three or four years from now, we may have to request another bond. You know, I, I can't say yes or no at this point. I guess I'm just a little mindful of Tom of your presentations. In terms of, I get the argument that money's cheap to borrow right now, but I do like the idea of, as a fundamental sort of paradigm shift, trying to increase the CIP for both the school and the town, and avoiding bonding every time we need to do something. Like, I, I'm not suggesting, I, I support this, so I'm not, I don't want to be talking at a school here. I, I, I would support this bond. But moving forward, I do think that there's there's some real, that's a good idea. <clears throat> I, I think that that's kind of where, that's what I was trying to figure out with the, like how long, how long will this kind of take kind of question, because <coughs> I feel like if we could go back, if we could go back in time, I think we'd all agree that we would have just been putting money away so that we wouldn't mm -hmm. have to raise a bond, because we all know that there's a huge problem in 20, 2021, 22. Um, and so, but I think we all recognize that this is something that really needs to happen. So I would, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of on the side of, I would almost say we should just try to raise the eight million or whatever we need, but at the same time, I think that doing this small portion now and then trying to come up with a better longer term solution over the next two years so that, you know, that next time that we do need to raise money for the roads, hopefully we either have some of it or there's a different long term <coughs> plan or, or maybe we don't have to do a bond or there might be some other issue that we, there might be some other solution we can come up with in two years. But I don't, we don't have that solution now. The, the other two items where we're putting money in is uh, we're putting $100,000 for the first time at, into the capital reserve fund that will be going to this. And, you know, whether next year we decide to put 200000 in. Uh, we're also, as we have been for a number of years now, increasing the line item for shimming and paving by 5%. You know, that, this year that brings in 17000 but, you know, there are, we're trying to address it in different fashions. 
I'm not hearing anything yeah. anybody says is something I haven't, the board hasn't thought of. But, but, if, but I also think when we sort of talk about an arbitrary 4% increase, you know, that at some point we may want to consider whether that number is the right number or whether that number has to be a little bit higher, not so much to have money to spend today, but to start to stockpile mm -hmm. some money yeah. to spend as we need it to avoid the bond and maybe the cost of avoiding bonds, which I think is what you were kind of talking about. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not, I'm not making any suggestion of changing anything today, but I, but as you say, Jenny, at some point we've got to talk about these things. So I, I do, it is an appealing idea to me. Mm -hmm to start to have a better fund on both school and town to deal with things. And I would certainly say, I believe the rest of the select board is also still here. So, you know, they've heard the, the comments uh, yeah. also. Well, I'd like to applaud the select board for finding that one piece that's been so difficult in finding revenue. I mean, uh, these projects, these solar projects um, are really, you know, you're you're pioneering out there. You're looking for things. You try you try things, you know, um, and and you 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 vet them, and uh, and if they make sense, they you know you go through with them. So continue to do that work uh, as best you can. I, I think that's great for the town. I, 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 on the the solar array, um, Stephen and Neil mm -hmm. and, and, and myself, uh, to me, have been sort of plowing the field for this concept uh, for a New Hampshire municipality. And, and other towns have you know, been interested in trying to copy our model. That's great. Ken, has there been any uh, movement to, uh, on that solar project of, of the town and the schools getting uh, wholesale power from that unit? <clears throat> it's premature for that. The uh, uh, <clears throat> back a year ago when we had talked to uh, Grand <coughs> Apollo, they it indicated they'd be entertaining that concept, but that's, you know, to negotiate down the road. Any other discussion? Okay, are we ready to um, vote on that article? What was the article number? Article three. Article three. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let Neil read it. <laughs> okay, all. Oh, sorry. We're going yeah. for a vote. Yeah, go for the vote. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all those in favor of uh, the motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Any abstentions? Okay. <coughs> It is approved. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Article 4, the operating budget. I'll move that the uh, budget committee uh, uh, approve Article 4 of operating budget to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the budget committee recommended sum of $7,703,736 for general municipal operations. This article does not include appropriations contained in special or individual articles addressed separately. Is there a second? Motion's been made and seconded. Do you have that, Tammy? Okay. Discussion on Article 4? There being no discussion, are you ready for the question? <clears throat> okay, all those in favor of Article 4 say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the majority has voted. Okay, um, moving on, I'll move that the uh, Budget Committee approve Article 5 uh, appropriation to capital reserve funds to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $819,000 to be added to previously established capital reserve funds as follows. Police, fire, radio replacement, 12,000. New and replacement equipment and vehicles for public works and highway department, 235,000. Road bridge rehabilitation, 100,000. Police vehicle replacement, 27,000. 
Town Hall renovations, 12,500. Replacement and equipping of ambulance, 75,000. Fire Department vehicle and equipment acquisitions, 277,500. Library building systems, 20,000. Recreation facilities, 20,000. Sewer equipment, sludge removal, 30,000. Dam maintenance and construction, 10,000 for a total of 819,000. Second. By Mark. Okay, any discussion on Article 5? There being no discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? The vote was unanimous by the budget committee. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'll move that the uh, budget committee uh, approve Article 6, appropriation to expendable trust funds, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $71,500 to be added to previously established expendable trust funds as follows. Library buildings and grounds, 41,000. Town facilities maintenance, 25,000. Recreation facilities, 5,500, for a total of 71,500. Do we have a second? I'll second. Do you have the second? Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, it was a unanimous vote on Article 6 by the Budget Committee. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll move that the Budget Committee approve Article 15, authorization to expend from pay by bag special revenue fund to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $120,000 for the purpose of offsetting the cost of collection and disposal of residential solid waste and such other direct costs as budgeted annually with said funds to come from the pay by bag special revenue funds. No funds to be raised by taxation. Is there a second to Article 15? Any discussion? Um, wh who decides the vendor for the bags? Who is the vendor? Or who decides the vendor? Who the decides? bags are weak. Uh, uh, Neil, could you help me on that? What? No, but who, who, de who decides who, who, what the vendor is? Initially, it was a committee that established it. And then it's just been, but then it's up been there? The board yep. And they've kept their price the same, haven't they? Yes. And that's been how many years? Quality has gone down. Eight. Eight? The qual quality has gone down? Hasn't it not? I mean. Oh, no, they're, they're horrible bags. They're terrible bags. We, we don't have any trouble. I mean, I know a lot of people do, but Tommy and I have the 13 pound bag, and that's all we use. And I mean, we cut up, he cuts up a lot of plastic because I can't cut it. I don't have the strength. But he cuts up a lot of plastic, and it goes in that. I mean, He's unbelievable. I was on the committee that set up those bags. Me too. Oh, that's right. You're yeah. on too. So and they have like different <laughs> quality levels, but I think it's a little bit gimmicky because as you go up in the quality level, the price per bag skyrockets. I'm talking about the price of the plastic itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so I think we set, set on the middle quality to begin with, but then I think the town went to the high quality. Oh, yeah. one. So you're I saying it's... <laughs> Ask me a corporation. Got it. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> 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 That's what I was telling them. More ways. <laughs> Fill it halfway up and register your car. <laughs> I think there's some people taking them to Concord to not the bags but the garbage. <laughs> um, so Article fi 15, the motion's been made and it's been seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, any abstentions? That was a unanimous <coughs> vote by the Budget Committee. Okay, thank you. And the final uh, 
article is I'll move that the uh, Budget Committee approve Article 16, authorization to expend from Senior Center re Rental Reven Special, Special Revenue Fund. I'm wearing out. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,380 for the purpose of offsetting operational and maintenance costs of the Slusher Center with said funds to come from the Senior Center Rental Special Revenue Fund. No funds to be raised by taxation. And, and Janet, why don't you second that? I will second that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I just have to take a second to um, to Paula's horn. She does remarkable, and um, we have never had a director that has done and does what Paula does. Paula goes out if if we need to have the front yard, not the yard, but the, the uh, sidewalk and so forth salted. Um, I know we've had some in the past that would not do that. They thought that was the highway department's uh, duties and they would wait until the, ha the hi highway department came and did it. But she does it. She's painted, um, she painted a half wall in the lobby part of the senior center this year, a dark blue. I mean, what a change it has made in that building. But, you know, she just grabs a paintbrush and the thing, well, actually, she probably uses the, the um, roller. But she's unbelievable. Her last thing that she tackled was downstairs in our pool room. We had a pool table in the middle of the, the room and um, with the council's approval, we had the pool table turned sideways so that we still could use that, but use that other part of that room um, for just other things. If people just want to go down there and talk, or they want to go down there and read the newspaper, or we have a television down there now, and um, you know, we can go down and watch television and so forth. And again, she got the brush out and that nice blue paint that she chose and did one whole wall in the blue. So she is an amazing, amazing person. And I can't really toot her horn enough. So um, I haven't done that for a long time. So I just tooted it. Thank you. <coughs> I'll, I'll second that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so um, we are on Article 15. Any discussion on Article 15? No, 16. Six, six, I'm sorry, 16. 16. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? The unanimous vote by the Budget Committee. Okay. Th th thank you all. That ends your budget, right? Thank you. Okay, now we are on the biggest budget, Mr. Bill Chapin. Now do I, <clears throat> am I going to read all the articles uh, here? Just, uh, just the ones no, that need just, a budget just, committee Just vote. the one that needs a budget. So Article 1 and then Article 2, the school board adopted the SB. Right, we don't need to do yeah, Okay, we're just going to start with Article 3 then. Um, um, so I'd like to move that the Budget Committee approve Article 3, um, which is to see if the Budget uh, Committee will vote to raise and appropriate uh, the Budget Committee's recommended amount of $21,416,331 for the support of schools, for the payment of salaries for the school district officials and agents, and for the payment of the statutory obligations of the district, or to make uh, or to take any other action uh, relation thereto. The Budget Committee vote is 7 to 3. The school Board uh, recommends this article. The article does not include appropriations voted in other Warren articles. The School Board vote on this was 3 to 2. It's, it's the vote. Sorry, the Budget Committee prior last week, 7 to 3, but that, that's still open. So disregard that. 
Strike that. Thank Do you, you want me to read it back? No, no. Okay. Uh, Sorry you about wanna, that, guys. You want to read everything except that part, right? Yes. So that's what we're okay. voting any, on. Any other action there in relation there to a period? <coughs> yes, thank you. Is there a second to that? I'll second it. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? No discussion. I, th I, I think the only thing I just want to say, and it's sort of to pair it with what Ginny was saying before, which is that, at least what I was hearing you to say, which is we pay town taxes for sure, but we also pay state taxes and we pay federal taxes. And there's not enough dollars coming back, and this is the problem that we have all the time. There's not enough of those dollars coming back here. So when we hear things like, you know, the politicians taking the pledge or the New Hampshire advantage, I mean, those are policy decisions that affect the stress that we have here. And I know we're not supposed to get into state and federal politics and town meetings, but I do think that it's important that every voter understand that they have a vote and that that vote speaks about how those tax dollars are being spent. And so I just, I just want to make that comment that I think it's important that we think about the big piles of money that could be allocated in a different way to help us. So that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor of Article 3, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Nay. No. Nay. Nay. Uh, any abstentions? So did you get that vote? It was Maybe again a 7 to 3 vote. Okay. By the Budget Committee. And again, I, I just, um, I mean, I've, as you all know, I've lived in this town forever and a day. Um, and I continue to pay my taxes um, to help other people pay their children's taxes um, on what they're getting from the schools and so forth. But I know I can't continue at the pace I'm I'm uh, paying, and I'm not trying to say a sad story, but when I worked for the state, we were able to not only contribute to our retirement, but we could um, contribute to what is called ING, I-N-G, and it was a system that we could um, put money into it and have it as part of our retirement, and I did. For many, many years, I put the maximum I could put in, and I know at one point it was 7,500, and I never ever thought when I was putting that money away that it was gonna be used for taxes. And that is my tax money. Um, and I have been using that for quite a few years now but I just cannot continue to pay the taxes that I have been paying, and my husband. And uh, you know, it's easy for people to say we can't cut, but we can't add as much to the budget every year that we continue to do. So that's why I voted against it. I voted for just because um Last year, I felt that as I examined the budget, and I really tried to make that middle cut, and I felt good about it, and I felt that there were some things that could definitely adjust. This year, as I looked at it, I honestly, and I kept waiting to see if something could be found. Um, I just did not feel uh, comfortable with not voting for the budget because I didn't see any fluff, and um, I guess I, I trust the school board, the decision that they made, I thank them for the cuts that they did make. I know it was hard, um, and I voted for the budget as it was presented, without adding anything new, which I feel 
uh, I'm uncomfortable with. I don't like the cut, unfortunately, that is going to have to be met, especially after reading that letter. But um, I know people worked hard to get it to where it was. And I don't like seeing the taxes go up. Since my husband and I built our home here in town, the taxes have increased every year. It's, um, it's always inflation, and we have to keep up with it. There are costs that there are, we can't do anything about. Um, and I hope that the select board will continue to help those that they can in town so that they can keep their homes. And I want to thank the uh, select board also for all the work that they've done. And to what Jonathan and Jimmy have said, we have two representatives that I want to thank, Dave Luno and now Myler, for the work that they've done in education at the state level. And I think all of us need to start really becoming as involved as we can, even if it's just with our vote. Because it is. That's where we need the help. And when we say that we have no taxes, well, we do um, at the state level, or we cut taxes down. Well, thank you. And so we're bearing the burden on our property taxes, which is why some people are losing their homes. Please make a difference and vote differently for what's going on in this state because we really are in a crisis and we need to turn it around. I've lived in many places and we've had property taxes. I know that's a bad word, but maybe sometimes we need to reevaluate a situation, think outside of the box because it's been the hardest on our homes. You can make a decision not to go out to dinner or do go to the movie. But when it comes to your home, that's the hardest decision that can be made. And yet the state continues to fight against something that just might help those of us that are here. I mean, I think we need to have a look elsewhere. That's my point. Thank you. Okay. Would you like to continue, Bill? Uh, yes. Moving on to Article 4. Um, we move um, to see if the Budget Committee will vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hopkinton School Board and the Hopkinton Educational Association, which calls for the following changes in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level. Fiscal year 2021, estimated increase of $307,669. 2021-22 estimated increase of $315,149 in 2022-2023 an estimated increase of $309,462 and further to raise and appropriate the sum of $307,669 for the upcoming fiscal year such sum representing the costs attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new <coughs> agreement over those that would be paid at current staffing levels. School board recommends this article, and the school board vote on this was four to nothing. Do we have a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Um, I would just like to say for the record that um, you know, health care costs is a big one um, for us, and uh, it's not easy um, to negotiate, but um, it's, it's one of the biggest cost drivers that we have, and, it, and we tried to, um, you know, to, to negotiate with that, to, to have a, a, a more of a share um, in the health care costs in the future. And hopefully the school board has set the precedent for other future school boards to continue to and try to share that health care cost onto the uh, teachers. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor of Article 4 say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? That's a unanimous vote by the Budget Committee. Okay, then moving on, I would move. Uh, uh, would I, I move that the um, Budget Committee uh, approve Article Six to see if the school um, to see if the Budget Committee will vote to approve the cost 
items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hopkinton School Board and the Teamsters Local number 633 of um, Of, uh, of, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't have it. I don't have it either. I, I, I have got you, Billy. But has it changed? There you go. I don't. I don't think it's changed. That's the last one. This would be the next page. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Yep. Just make sure there's a number in there. What what article number are you? Yeah, I'm on six. article six. 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 Here's the end of six. Yeah, say five there though. Okay. Yeah, the number. You might say five on there. They did. <laughs> yeah. Six. Let me start at the beginning here. But you make sure it might be five. Just added the SB two. Oh, we added SB two. Hold on just a second. Let's make sure we get the right one. Sorry, I flipped, and as you can see, there's. Yeah, when the copying was done, they missed it. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start at the beginning on yes. Article 6. Yes, go ahead. Um, Article 6. Article 6. I move that the Budget Committee approve Article 6, which is to vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hoppington School Board and the Teamsters Local Number 633 of New Hampshire Teamsters, which calls for the following changes in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level. For fiscal year 2021, uh, an estimated increase of $12,437. Fiscal year 21-22, an estimated increase of uh, $10,751. Uh, fiscal year 22-23, an estimated increase of $13,896, and then fiscal year 23-24, which is an estimated increase of $9,175. Um, and further to raise and appropriate the sum of $12,437 for the upcoming fiscal year, such sum representing the costs attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would be paid at current staffing levels. The school board recommends this article. The school board vote was three to nothing. Second. Motion has been made and seconded on Article 6. Is there any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, any abstentions? It's a unanimous vote again by the budget committee. Okay, uh, moving on. Um, would uh, uh, move to take this away? It might just confuse you. Yeah, hold on. I just need those first words. So, um, I would move to see if the budget committee will vote to raise and appropriate the sum. This is Article Eight. Um, I move to see if the Budget Committee will approve Article 8 um, to raise and appropriate a sum of $150,000 for the purpose of the General Contingency Fund to meet the cost of unanticipated expenses that may arise during the year and to expend said funds or to take any other action in relation thereto. The Hopkinton School Board recommends this article. The School Board vote was 3 to 2. Second. Do we have a second for the oh, second? Yeah. I'm sorry. Did yeah, you? I'll second. Oh, okay, Tom is second. That. Second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Janet, if I may. Yes. Uh, I have. Um, so I feel a little conflicted about this article. Uh, we are, as I understand it, um, unable to recommend a change in the amount of this article. We, as a budget committee, can either recommend it to the, uh, uh, for the school district meeting or we can uh, recommend voting it down. And um, so my personal view is that uh, we should have a contingency fund, but that it should be less than it is now. Um, as I've looked at what's been put forward, there are three potential positions that could be needed. Um, 
and the general guidance that we've, I think, heard and used at the Budget Committee is about $100,000 a position, give or take. Um, so if one of those position hits, the contingency fund will be used. If two hit, the contingency fund will be insufficient and the school uh, administration and the board will have to figure out how to deal with that. The other things that were listed in the presentation on the contingency fund, including the numeracy and literacy specialists, are things that those are already, those reflect hard decisions that Steve as superintendent already made of things to reduce from the budget. And it's not that I'm in support of those reductions, um, because those are clearly important <coughs> positions. But that's the hard work that was done by the administration and the school board already. And so those don't feel to me like things that belong in a, in a contingency fund. Those are things that either should be in the operating budget or not. The three potential positions that could be needed if the numbers change feel like things that potentially, you know, where contingency is needed. And one of those, which is the kindergarten, we've heard repeatedly from Steve that you think that's very un that's unlikely based on what on the research that you all have done from feeders. So there's really two positions there that where there's a real chance, and I think a contingency fund of hundred thousand dollars to cover one of those would be sufficient. So my personal preference is that that figure would be a hundred, and that either that's all there would be, or that that fifty thousand dollars would then be moved. That additional fifty thousand would then go to the uh, maintenance trust fund to address some of the comments that were made earlier about needing to put more money into uh, maintenance. So I, I'm a little conflicted because I don't really want to vote it down, um, but uh, on the floor during the school district meeting, I think it's it might be worth a conversation worth having. Okay. There were two high school sections. Okay, thank you, Steve. So that's yeah. about 40000 Okay. So that's, the board typically goes half. Yep. I put in the, um, the, and I appreciate the comments about numeracy. So those were very hard decisions. And, uh, one of the suggestions that was made could be back to one of those positions with volunteers. And, and so, you know, if you can't get the services that we need for kids or services at the time, volunteers could be, you know, we could try something. Any other discussion? No? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? It's a unanimous vote by the Budget Committee. Okay, moving on. Um, I'd like to move that the Budget Committee approve Article 9, uh, which is to raise and appropriate $142,500 uh, to be added to the school district uh, building repair and maintenance fund established on March 6, 1993 and renamed at the March 9, 2019 school district meeting. The school board recommended this article. Uh, the school board vote was 3-2. to two. Second. second. Discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, it's a unanimous vote. 
on Article 9. Okay, uh, moving on, I'd move that the Budget Committee approve Article 10, which is to vote to raise and appropriate $40,000 to be added to the Special Education Expendable Trust Fund established on March 19, 2005, and renamed at the March 10, uh, at the March 10, 2018 meeting. The Hopkins School Board uh, recommends this article. A school board vote was five to nothing. Second. Motion has been made and seconded on Article 10. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? It's a unanimous vote on Article 10. And finally, I would uh, move that the Budget Committee approve Article 11, which is uh, to raise and appropriate $15,000 to be added to the Replacing School District Vehicles Capital Reserve Fund established on March 6, 2010. School Board, um, I'm sorry, School Board recommends this article, and that vote was five to nothing. Second. Motion's been made and seconded on Article 11. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstention? It's a unanimous vote on Article 11. That's it. We have to sign now. <laughs> Yeah, Thank, you. Thank you. Do you have the um, forms to sign? No. 